Have you been keeping up with Joe Rogan's seemingly evolution on faith in God and specifically Christianity? We were having this conversation at lunch and uh, and I was we were talking about the red pill in particular, which yeah. I'm sure we can circle back around. And you you pushed back a little bit and you're like, hey man, like to be fair though, bro, you don't know what it's like to date <laughs> in this climate. Bruce Lawn. All right, for folks who don't know who you are, introduce yourself to the audience. Sure thing. So my name is Zuby. I'm an independent rapper, author, host of the Real Talk with Zuby podcast, public speaker, and coach. I originally hail from the UK, grew up in Saudi Arabia, went to school there for many years, international school, hence the confusing accent, family background originally from Nigeria, and uh, I'm a world traveler. I travel all over the place. I'm mm -hmm. currently nomadic. I've been nomadic for the past two years. Well, I've been nomadic all my life to some degree, uh -huh. but for the past two years, I've literally been living a life of what I call luxury homelessness, meaning I have no fixed <laughs> I have no fixed abode, but um, I've been to 10 countries so far this year, Come on. dozens of different cities, yep. and just uh, doing events and connecting with people all over the world now. That's amazing. Now, when you are traveling everywhere, are you staying, like are you doing Airbnbs, hotels? It's totally random, but mm. uh, or are you doing like long-term rentals? Like how, how are you able to, you know, yeah. stay at places so many places yeah sure so i do a, i get booked for a lot of events so if okay. i get booked for a speaking event or a performance or something like that typically the organizers of that you know they're, they'll i'll get paid a fee they'll cover flights and accommodation yeah. and everything in the meantime between time combination of hotels sometimes airbnbs it depends on where i'm staying and how yeah. long for yeah but oftentimes i mean on average i'm typically on a plane at least once a week yeah sometimes i'll be fortunate and i can stay somewhere for Two or three weeks, sure. But um, you know, just this week I've been on. You know, in the past week I've been on three flights. Yeah, I came over to the U.S. what two weeks ago now. Spent some time in Miami, then flew out to Las Vegas. Yeah, over here now in California. Yep. And uh, yeah, lots more to come. But earlier this year I was in. I've been to Dubai twice. Yep. I've been to Doha in Qatar. I've been to South Africa. I spoke did a uh, spoke at a big event in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Been back to the U.K. Also spent some time in Mexico. In, um, I was in Italy two mm -hmm. weeks ago, so mm -hmm. I've just been all over the place, That's awesome. bro. Yeah. People probably uh, would know you best from, you've been on Rogan, mm -hmm. you've done some stuff with the Daily Wire crew, uh, Ben Shapiro, you educated Ben Shapiro <laughs> about rap being music, yeah. which was amazing, massive W for Amen. you. Not a lot of people was... can, not a lot of people <clears throat> have changed his mind on something Ben Shapiro publicly. was wilding with that, bro. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't have rhythm, and it, uh, it's just rhythm, it's no melody, and you're like, no, no, there's yeah. melody in rap, <laughs> bud. Especially the newer stuff. Yeah. So that was good. I, I I love seeing you on there. Um, I mean, you've been on. Every, you've interviewed Andrew Tate. You've been on Fresh and Fit. You've uh, I, I, fill me in. Dude, some of some I, other names. I've been. Been, I've been on. You just did like Lila Rose's pod with live yep, action, so that's gonna yep. be coming out soon. Shout I, out to I, Lila I was, Rose. Yeah, I was saying. I think. And look, someone someone can put someone else up for this, but I I might wager that I may be the person who's been on the biggest range and diversity of podcasts and shows out of anybody in this world yeah um so from religious podcasts and shows to political stuff mm -hmm. social cultural stuff bitcoin and cryptocurrency yeah. health and fitness zuby was music. trying to get me back into bitcoin <laughs> between our streams guys. yeah these dating and relationship podcasts i've been on fresh and fit six times Pearly things. Yep, yep. i've been on that twice yep, yep. um so and then I have my own podcast as well. So yep. I, I'm at the intersection of so many different worlds. Sure. People will notice, you know, when you ask me what I do, I brought up five different career paths yep. there. Yep. So as a result of that and also doing so much stuff yeah. all over the world, like yep. I'm, I'm not from America, but yep. the U.S. Here is, a my, lot. Yeah, yeah. US yep. is my biggest audience yep. and I travel all over. So just having doing doing what I do in the way I have yeah. and getting the opportunity to travel so much, yep. I think a lot of people like my perspectives on things because it's not coming from just a single angle. Yeah. I, I've grown up across multiple countries, very different cultures. I mean, I lived in Saudi Arabia for 20 years. Yep, yep. My family's originally from Nigeria. I've been to 37 countries at this point. Yeah. I was in both the American school system up until fifth grade, then the British mm -hmm. school system. So I don't kind of have like a typical American view or a typical British view yep. or a typical Nigerian view or sure. a typical Saudi view. Sure. I'm kind of just this man of the world and I see things from different angles yeah. and I like to comment on it. Yeah. And a lot of people find value in that, whether they agree, disagree, yeah. um, whatever it is. So, yeah. so it's been a fun journey. A lot of folks are uh, don't 
know that you're also a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I've known you, when did, we met in person in 2019, but 2019. I feel like we were friendly way before that when I interviewed you way back when, uh, when I was doing my mobile setup. We were mm -hmm. at A3C conference in um, Atlanta. Atlanta, and then we happened to randomly hang out uh, was it two years ago? Yes, in LA. With, with well, that was LA, and then we were in Miami together yep. with Patrick but David mm, yes. and Adam Saw. Shout out to those guys. And so, uh, so a lot of my audience is like, "Oh, I didn't know Zuby was a Christian." Yeah. You know. So uh, d talk about that and, and just the role that faith has played in your life, and 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 maybe why you aren't as known for your faith as much. Why do you think that? Yeah, is? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so my whole family is Christian. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of five. My you know I'm, my immediate family is seven people. And then my wider family is way, way bigger than that. Mm -hmm. I've got over 50 first cousins. Um, the Udezwe family is gigantic. So my, my whole family, as far as I know, is, is Christian. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, like I said, I, I grew up in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. So fully Islamic country. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in an expat community over there. Mm -hmm. But from a very young age, I was going to church every Friday. There, the weekend is Thursday and Friday, right. not Saturday and Sunday. So right. Friday was the day. I think it's day. similar in Israel, too. Yeah, so yeah. Fri Friday was the day that um, that we go to church. When I say going to church, there's no church buildings mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia. So in our community, we would do church either in the school gymnasium mm -hmm. or in the theater. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, I, I was going to church. I was going to, it was still called Sunday school, even though it was on Friday. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in that. My dad is, both my parents are people of faith. I remember my dad all throughout my life. And even now, every morning he's reading the Bible mm -hmm. first thing in the morning, drinking his, drinking his coffee. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we would do family prayers as, a, you know, as a, all seven of us in the evening, we, you know, even pa pass out the hymnals. I remember that as a kid, you know, we'd all have mm -hmm. the hymnals go to, you know, this page and we, and we'd all sing together as a family. It was a lot of fun. So I've, I've I've been a Christian all the way through. I don't have um I don't have like a conversion story mm -hmm. myself. I think as you become a teenager and you go into your early 20s and so on, I think every I think every believer who is a critical thinker and intellectual is going to go through times and periods and moments where you you question it all, right? Because I think if you grow up in a faith, you just grow up in it. And as a kid, you, you don't really make your own decisions about these things. You're just like, whatever your parents tell you is sure. true or whoever, yeah. whatever you're surrounded by, that's what's true. That's what you yeah. do. Yep. But then you get to an age where you become more independent and you start to become more questioning and you think, okay, I think at some point you have to make a decision if a religion is actually for you, mm. right? Whatever faith or lack of you are raised in, you'll get to a time in your life where you think, okay, wait, all right, I've... I've been told all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me really think about it. Let me talk to other people, mm -hmm. um, see what other beliefs are out there. What are the criticisms against my my own religion? Why right. doesn't everyone, why do some people believe in it and uh, others don't? And so on. From a very young age, it, it was actually a massive blessing that the community I grew up in was truly, truly diverse. Mm -hmm. You had people from all over the world, all different nationalities. It's because you're in... Saudi Arabia, yeah. but it's this American community, right? Or expat community. Exp so define in, that in, for me. International community. Got it. So you had people from all over. You had people from from Europe, from yeah. North America, um, from Australia, and New Zealand, from other Arab countries, mm -hmm. Jordan, Syria, um, all over the place. Other African countries. It was just people from all over who have come to work in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone's a, an engineer or a doctor or a teacher yeah. or some kind of, you know, IT worker or a technician. So I, I was kind of in this bubble, but what one thing that was great about it is it just meant from the very beginning, yeah. I was surrounded by everybody, different nationalities, different skin colors, mm -hmm. different religious beliefs, yep. different types of, you know, it was, so I, for me, that was always just kind of the norm. Mm -hmm. And I knew, of course, cool, I'm in a prime, predominantly Muslim country. Yep. Um, my family is Christian as are the other people going to our church and so on. Um, but I'm also talking to all these different people and trying to understand, okay, what are the things we agree on? What are sure. the things we disagree on? What, what, what does this stuff really mean? What does sure. it mean to be a Muslim? Sure. What does it mean to be a Christian? Yep. What does it mean to be an, an atheist, a Hindu, a, a Buddhist, right? Mm -hmm. It was all there. Yep. So I didn't grow up in an environment where all I ever saw was one thing. And then I, d I kind of didn't see the rest until I was older. For me, it was like I've, I've you were always, immersed in it. I was immersed. I was yeah. immersed in it all. Yeah. And then, um, you know, going, I went to boarding school when I was eleven, mm -hmm. um, in England. So I still lived in Saudi Arabia. 
but I was flying by myself back and forth from Whoa, but, at yeah. 11. Yeah, at 11. Yeah, so I was traveling internationally by myself since 11. Wow. So like the life I live now, people are like, man, how do you, I'm like, bro, I've been doing this forever. Wow. Um, God, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't imagine sending my son away to yeah. boarding school, man. After fifth grade, the school I went to, um, the youngest boarders were seven. Oh my gosh. Bro. Yeah. And that's nah, international too. Man. Like there were people's, some of these, you know, this seven-year-old boy, his parents are in South Korea and he's here in the UK. Sometimes it, they barely spoke English. And Bro. yeah, now that I'm older, I'm like, man, like that's kind of crazy to send your seven year old away. My son's about to be nine, bro. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't, know. I don't think I could do that. Yeah, yeah. So the first school I went to was from ages seven to twelve, mm -hmm. and then the um, secondary school you'd call it in the UK was from about twelve or thirteen okay. up to up to seventeen or eighteen. And that was that was dope. You enjoyed that? It was cool. Yeah. It was cool. Um, I think it made me independent really young because yeah. yeah. when I got to university, when I was eighteen, yeah. I'd already been away from my family gotcha. and my parents for seven years. You've been this independent point. for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, I've been independent yeah. for a long time. So I noticed the difference between me and the people who were just leaving home at that yeah. point now. You were well adjusted and stuff. Yeah, I was yeah, well adjusted. Yeah, yeah. I remember people, yeah, you know, no, crying crying because they were homesick and whatever. I'm like, yeah. bro, you're homesick? Like, come on, man. But then I realized, okay, this is your first time. <laughs> this is your first time away from home. I'm like, I've been doing yeah. this for seven years, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I think your parents were probably doing it as a as a means to make you resilient you know, and to, and to develop that mm. tenacity in you where it's like, Hey, like you're here to, to, to thrive and, and to crush it. Yeah. You absolutely. We're not going to coddle you. No. And, and yeah. it, it was also the norm where I grew up, uh, the community I grew up in, uh, almost everyone went to boarding school. Mm -hmm. The only thing is I went early. Mm. So the school I went to in Saudi, it, it went up to ninth grade. Yep. So most of the Americans would go to boarding schools in the USA for what 10th to 12th grade mm -hmm. most of the canadians would go to canada the brits mm -hmm. would go to the uk so on only thing with me is because i was switching from the american to the british school mm -hmm. system my parents thought it would be better to go out early mm -hmm. rather than late because then you you'll kind of the systems are quite different and yep. what you're learning is different yep. so if you wait until 16 to go out there yeah. and then you have to switch to a whole different system and different subjects then you can kind of be yeah. behind a little bit yeah that makes sense so it sounds like as so, so you gr you grow up getting this wide view of all types of different people. Mm -hmm. You develop independence very early. You don't have this like come to Jesus type moment, mm -hmm. but as you grow up, you start to examine these other worldviews and these other faiths, yeah. and you come, you know, stay committed or or come back, stay committed, come back. I don't know mm -hmm. how to phrase it to like, no, 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 no. This makes the most amount of sense to me in terms of your Christian faith. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. that makes sense. Um, Anything else you want to share on that aspect? Um, oh, you yeah, you asked a second you're, question. You're, you're, you, you asked me why. You asked actually a great question. Why, you asked me yeah. why perhaps to because you're very pro life. Know. You're very pro life. You're very yeah. open about your. I'm, values. I'm very open about my real religion as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think any anyone who's listened to my music yeah. or I mean, I'm not explicitly. I don't define myself as a Christian rapper. Sure, but if you listen to my album, yep. I don't think there's much doubt about what my beliefs are. Yep. You know. Um, but I don't. I don't tend to lead with it. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's perhaps the reason why some people may not know. I think anyone gotcha. who follow who follows me closely yep. and actually listens to my podcasts and interviews yeah. and yeah. stuff like that, yep. it's very clear. That and makes sense. I've, an, I've answered the. You know, I, I'm very open about it. I don't yeah. sort of hide that I'm a Christian. Yeah. I just don't. I don't put it in my. You know, if you go on my social media bio, it won't say Christian. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, mine's explicitly. like leads with follower of Jesus. Y yeah, you know, and, and, and some, <laughs> purple cross. Yeah, you know, some, some, some people, <laughs> some people do that. Um, and part of the reason why I don't is actually going back to when I just started out with my music, which mm -hmm. I did in university. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually because I was always wary about. It, it was kind of two things. Number one, not wanting to be boxed in. Mm -hmm. Because I always felt like, oh, if I call myself a Christian rapper, mm -hmm. then if I don't mention Jesus or scripture or something yeah. in, in, in a song, yeah. then... Christians ain't going like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, I kind of would feel compelled to do that. And I'm like, actually, you know, I want to be able to talk about a lot of other things as yeah. well. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, box myself in. Yep. And also, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to feel like I'm, you know, quote unquote, just preaching to the choir. Sure. Right? So just like if... Um, and it was, there also wasn't a massive... Christian hip hop scene in London. No, right? no. In, yeah. in the in the UK there isn't. Yeah. There, to, to this day there isn't. Yeah, um, yeah. it's a much it's a much smaller country. People always have to remember that the US is gigantic, and that there's big audiences for all sorts of niches and everything. Yes. yes. Whereas in most other nations, you know, 
the you you know in, in a country like the UK or any European country, just yeah. most smaller countries, there isn't like a whole scene and ecosystem yeah. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes these, sense. these type of niches, right? Yeah. In, the, in the US, you can explicitly be like a Christian conservative rapper, mm -hmm. and there's like a whole audience for that. Right. Um, not, you, not so UK, much. No, that's too. That's just yeah. too narrow in the UK. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and so I know how people respond to labels, mm -hmm. right? So even if I put if I put Christian in my bio right now, that might be good marketing for people who are already Christians, just to tell them right off the bat, hey, I'm aligned with you. Mm -hmm. But what it can also do, it's the same reason I don't put like my political orientation in my bio mm -hmm. or I don't put everything in but there. But you put your pronouns in your bio. <laughs> <laughs> Only when I'm trying to protect myself from being canceled. Um, <laughs> I quickly become a they that I'm just multiply. Um, <laughs> become plural. Oh, yeah, so I think... Um, what was the point I was making? Isn't that funny though? That that like people <laughs> put put that in their you know what I mean? Like the mm. stuff you put in your bio is so hilarious to me. Like what you will yeah. or won't put, you know. But, but we, putting pronouns definitely that's hard that, that signals something. It does. You that's I mean? that's that's my yeah, point. Yeah. Right. So because people have assumptions and prejudices around various boxes. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you see in someone's pro profile it says Christian, conservative, pro life patriot, MAGA. Yeah. American flag. Yeah, you immediately. That's a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's but, a whole lot. <laughs> right? Or even a couple of them, right? Like, oh, I'm overwhelmed, even a couple, man. Even if it just says, you know, conservative patriot, like yeah, you assume, yeah, all of it, like whether sure. it's positive or it's negative, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a whole basket of assumptions that come with that. Yep. Right. And I prefer people to come into the fold and listen. Yep. And then once you've gotten to know me yes right like if you meet someone in the real world yeah. i assume even someone like yourself you probably don't go hey i'm ruslan and i'm a christian and i'm a youtuber and i'm yeah. a creator you hey how are you what's yeah. your name nice yeah. to meet you right you you start at the beginning and then as the conversation goes on yeah you can talk about these various things yeah. rather than kind of scaring them off at the beginning right yeah. I, i'll be real yeah. like i have the same if i go on someone's profile and i see you know i see that you know they them he him whatever well, I, I immediately, I'm like, okay, I know what I'm, and, and perhaps I, I shouldn't make those assumptions. Yeah. I shouldn't be so presumptuous and whatever, yeah. but that is what happens when you overtly label yourself. So I know with me uh, as a creator, I had the hesitation. Well, not, not even a hesitation. I, I just didn't want to do that you. because I didn't want people, my message isn't only for Christians. Sure. So I didn't want someone to go, oh, Christian rapper. I'm not a Christian. Yeah. That's not for me. I'm not even going to listen. Yeah. I'd rather be like, yeah, I'm a rapper. Okay, cool. Listen. Yeah. And then you'll get the message of this in you the You think music. that's just also how Americans tend to be hyper individualistic? Like you, you have to wear your your, your mm. you, everybody got a team, everybody got a hat, everybody got a jersey, every, like and and everyone's a part of these tribes. And so you, because we're hyper individualistic, we have to then overly communicate these values. You think that's a, that's a thing? Like like for example, mm. like it is very common in American culture when you meet someone within the first few minutes of interaction, asking them what they do for work. Yeah. That's, I don't see that when I've traveled internationally. Like yeah, it's people it's don't, more common here. Yeah, people don't really bring up like what you do for work. Mm. Uh, here's a great example. In the UK, nobody has bumper stickers on their car. Mm. And nobody puts flags in their yard. And that's kind of what the, what the bio is on social media. Yeah. In, in the US, way. you travel around the US all over the country, you see flags in people's yards, <laughs> right? Where the, right? You see you see the flags. The bumper like, stickers. Yeah, you see the flags. You see those yeah. little yard signs. Yeah. You see bumper stickers on cars. Not, not every, but you see people wearing t-shirts, right? Yeah. In yeah. the UK, have you ever seen someone wearing a Boris Johnson t-shirt or a, a Rishi's? <laughs> like, it's so goofy. In the in the UK, you can't, you can't even yeah. imagine someone yeah. wearing like a politician's merch. Yeah, no, that's good. That's in good the point. US, like politicians, merch yeah. shifts oh it moves right? like people are selling you make an empire yeah, off of mega it's, merch bro. It's, it's it's crazy like in in the u.s and other countries that's not a thing yeah so there is something quite unique about the u.s no I think, where I people think sort of wear their tribal labels 100 more on their sleeves yeah uh I, I think you're i think i think that's very interesting so thank you for answering that so let's i want to i want to get into the being christian mm. being single in this marketplace, we talked a little bit about that. Sure. But before we get into that, I kind of want to, I kind of want to hear like, just your experience and some of the folks you've you've been able to interview with, mm. and uh, how, how those situations, you know, from your vantage point went. So like Ben Shapiro, yeah, not a hip hop guy. Mm. I would say super duper hyper conservative to the point where he's kind of checked out of like things that he, aren't his culture, like classical. You know what I mean? Like it's this mm -hmm. very like. Uh, I don't want to, because I think he's brilliant and I think he's smart, but it's this very, I don't want to say the word elitist, but there's this like, I'm classically orthodox. orthodox I'm classically trained on the violin. Yeah. And like what, what you do, Zuby, is not music, right? Yeah. Like it's, it, 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 it's how it comes off. And so 
what was your interaction like with him and, and the way that podcast played out? Mm. And do you think you were able to persuade him to kind of open up his horizon a little bit and say, just because my definition of hip hop is not music, mm. that no, it's still music and I'm a hip hop artist and I should be taken as a musician seriously. And that what you do and what I do is, it is an art, it is a music, it is a craft. It does have melody, it does have rhythm, right? Yeah. Um, how do you think that interaction went with Ben Shapiro specifically? I, I think it went really well. Um, we did our first, that, that first interview was in 2019. Okay. Uh, to, to, to this day, I've done literally hundreds and hundreds of You were probably like the first rapper on there, right? Yeah, definitely. Because he just had Tom McDonald yeah. on there like a couple weeks ago. and then that, But that was the first time I ever saw him interview a rapper. Yeah. I so think... you were the change, bro. <laughs> you bringing him around. Yeah. It was, it was a great interaction. Um, so that, that, that interview was... It was only planned on the week. So I, I'd gone out to L.A. for the first time. This is September 2019. Mm -hmm. to do, I think that's uh, when we first met. Yeah. yeah. To do uh, the Rubin Report because mm -hmm. uh, Dave Rubin was in L.A. And then the Joe Rogan Experience for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then Ben Shapiro on The Daily Wire reached out and said, hey, we want to do a Sunday special mm -hmm. with you that weekend. So that's when I met. I met I met Jeremy. I remember I met Michael Knowles. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd already met Candace because we did an interview in London mm -hmm. earlier that summer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I met Ben and found he speaks just as fast in real life. Um, I but mean, that man speaks fast, bro. <laughs> you, I react to stuff at 1.25 speed, <laughs> not with Ben Shapiro, bro. He's just rattling yeah. off, man. Yeah, very nice guy and polite. Yeah. You know, I get I get asked a lot. You know, what are all these people like in real life? And yeah. super nice guy, super polite, very you know, very friendly. Yeah. Um, and so the, the conversation was really good. Something I, I mean, I, I respect I respect Ben a lot. I like Ben a lot. I know he's uh, seen by, you know, controversial by a lot of people. I like most controversial people. I know a lot of controversial people. <laughs> I'm considered one to some people. Um, but what I like, really like about Ben is, you know, he, he, has a, he has his very strong values mm -hmm. in principles and beliefs. But at the same time, he's also very open-minded. Mm -hmm. He's very intellectually curious. Mm -hmm. um, he's not someone who just will talk to people who share his exact religious beliefs and political beliefs and whatever, mm -hmm. you know, he'll, he'll have on people from all over the spectrum on his show, yeah. if, as long as they're willing to sit down. Yeah, and I've always appreciated to, that. Yeah, about, I, yeah. I, I, th I think that's cool because that's what, that's what we need and that's how you build understanding. So I think that specific conversation, I mean, this is, again, this is going back three and a half years ago, but that, that convo went really well. I think I was able to open his perspective on a few, on a few other things. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of points of agreement. But then with something like rap and hip hop, I mean, there it was interesting because he he asked me my perspective on and a lot of my criticisms of a lot of mainstream rap and hip hop are exactly the same as his. Mm -hmm. Which are? Which are a lot of the stuff that is pushed out there is degenerate. Content wise. Yeah. Content Correct. wise. Okay. Content. Yeah. yeah I'm not I, th talking I think about, we'd all agree. Yeah. I'm that. not talking about if it's music or yeah, not, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but it's. You know, the the messaging in hip hop, if you're listening to a lot of the stuff, I'm sure, you know, somebody comes on on the radio you, with your kids, I don't yeah. you know, nope, like, let's not, For let's sure. not have that on, 100%. right? I think um, most reasonable most people, yeah. even if you're not uh, mm -hmm. a conservative or a Christian, would probably agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not not playing WAP with my kids in the car. Exactly. You know and what I mean? what's crazy is th those are the type of songs that are going number one. And mm -hmm. that's not really new. Yes. Um, it's not. Even if we go back to when we were teenagers yep. or before that, yep. I know you know you went to go to see Snoop Dogg Snoop. when you, when Saw you were a Snoop. kid. What, yeah. I was like, so I couldn't have been older than ten, bro. I think I was like eight or nine. I was my son's age seeing Snoop. Death Row, mm -hmm. uh, Doggy Style Tour. Mm -hmm. Is it the Doggy Style Tour or the Chronic Tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's not exactly wholesome. You know, there's a lot of lot of violence, a lot of sexism. You know, genuine misogyny, uh, promotion and glorification of drug dealing. Sometimes Do you think that's why it makes so him on. say that that's not music though? Because I feel like we could all agree. Yeah. Again, even if you're a liberal, mm -hmm. if you're a leftist, you'd be like, eh, probably, well, it's probably not a good thing to play with my kids in a car, right? Yeah. We would all agree. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that the content is then what, what would make someone like Ben say it's not music? Do you know? Do you know what I think it is? Is I just think you know there is main there is mainstream hip hop. There's stuff I've heard on the radio, mm -hmm. and I'm like, dude, if this was all I heard of hip hop, maybe I also wouldn't think it's music because mm -hmm. I'm I'm hearing something. I'm like, lyrically and musically, like this is very lackluster. Sure, but it's getting blasted out on the radio. It's yeah. playing in the clubs, whatever. You have to remember most people, if you're not a hip hop fan, mm -hmm. your only exposure to it is really going to be like the most mainstream stuff that's pushed out sure. there that's on the radio and so yeah. on. You're not going underground and finding yeah, independent yeah, yeah. artists yep. and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think the view, the view of music is, you know, comes from how his father or classical music teachers explicitly define music to him as having these three elements. Mm -hmm. um, Which rap I, does have, though. It, it, it does. But, you know, rap isn't. 
there is melodic rap. Yeah. Not all rap is melodic. Most rap isn't. Yeah. But I would not in my I don't think music explicitly must be melodic to be music. Sure. Somebody right. said uh, conservatives. Some conservatives <laughs> have no fun button. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's it's, ac- it's actually true. Um, you know, I, I, if someone could just be like banging out a drum beat, yeah, and going, and to me that's music. I wouldn't sure. say, oh, there's no melody. Okay, I'm like that in itself is music. So to me, that's like a very subjective thing. But I know he did change his mind on that because uh, I don't know what university it was, mm-hmm. but in some Q and A, uh, a student actually stood up and asked him about this, and he explicitly brought up that he'd had me on the show and that I changed his mind. So. <laughs> Zuby out here changing conservatives hey. mind i love it all right that's great man uh i loved his interview with william lane Cla- craig i thought that was a great conversation mm-hmm. yeah, i'm not sure if you ever saw that they were talking about the resurrection of jesus I did, yeah and william lane craig is just laying it on him bro he's like well the evidence for this and the evidence for yeah. that and, and this whole thing and the mission is just like let's move on <laughs> Well, I just don't find that interesting. And yeah. I was like, oh, you tapped out, man. <laughs> you tapped out. You didn't want to go there on Jesus and you tapped out. But it's great to hear that you changed his mind on hip hop. Maybe yeah. I can change his mind on Jesus someday. Maybe so, man. It would be, man, I, I would love to see you guys sit down and have a conversation. <laughs> I'll reach out. I'll send him yeah. a DM on Instagram, which he probably will not see. Um, but yeah, I think I think the fact that he's willing to have, and this is the, this is the frustrating part, man, is like I feel like in the conservative space, you see way more people willing to have conversations with people they disagree with. Yeah. In the liberal spaces, outside of the Young Turks, and even them, I would say, they seem to be kind of gatekeeper-ish, mm-hmm. you know? And that's, by the way, that's imploding on them. I'm not sure if you've been keeping up with um, the lady, the co-host, um, Anna, Anna, yeah. and <laughs> her getting canceled by the left, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. I love it when they eat their own. Uh, <laughs> I think it's great. But even in those spaces, like, it, you know, it, it doesn't seem like people are willing to sit down with people they disagree with no you know and i think that's that's unfortunate um because i think we can learn a lot and i think we can at least get clarity oh Mm -hmm. this is what you believe about this this is what you believe about that you know what i mean you go ahead Uh, i was going to say the reason for that is because people across the spectrum Mm -hmm. this is more of a problem on the left wing side of things over the last decade but across the entire spectrum and across even this goes for both politically and religiously philosophically whatever it is there's this belief that there's this concept of, you know, like platforming someone. Yeah. Or, or like, if, if we have a conversation, I'm fully it, endorsing. It, it, exactly. Yes, or yes. co-signing. Like if you just sit down and have an adult man to man conversation with somebody that you are endorsing them and their views yeah. and their actions. That's right. That's you know, good. you you said something in the past, in the present, even in the future. Yeah. Right. So it's weird. If you interview someone and then a year later they do or say something crazy and people are like, hey, Ruslan, you know, yeah. you were, we're holding you accountable. You had this guy on your show and what, as if you can control. I got, a, I got a good story for you. Okay, go ahead. So do you know who Young Don is? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. He's so a streamer. You, streamer. Yeah. Uh, his main channel, one of the biggest black creators on YouTube, mm-hmm. 2.5 million subscribers, mm-hmm. right? And Don goes on Sneeko's stream and basically says, oh, like, I'm, you know, Sneeko asks him, or China Mac asks him, like, are you religious? He's like, yeah, I'm religious. I grew up Christian. Mm. So I reach out to Don, hit him up. Hey, man, you know, that's really cool. I'm glad you were open about your faith. Don has this, like, come to Jesus moment in the in the light of all the Roe v. Wade stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was, his whole faith journey has been nothing but messy. Like, m- like messy. Like, mm-hmm. he's, like, hardcore Calvinist, and he's hardcore free grace, and he's KJ, King, King James Bible only. Then he's, uh, anyway, it's been a whole process. And so in, in the process, I'm building with him. I'm talking mm-hmm. to him, I'm FaceTiming him, I'm checking in on him. He comes to California. We do a conversation just like this. I don't think nothing of it. And then he he keeps changing positions. He One minute he's once saved, always saved. The next minute he's not once saved, always saved. And in the process, people are like, how, how could you platform him? Mm, okay. I'm literally talking to one of the biggest black creators yep. on YouTube, like massive 2.4 million channels. His second, third channels are all massively huge. I'm not platforming him. No. I'm having, I'm having a conversation because <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to figure out where he's at and of where course. he's going. Long story short, recently Don, Don, he's then denied the Trinity and he's okay. just like, it's a, he's just all over the place. And I'm like, I, I, I would hope that, especially with something as delicate as faith, that we can be in positions where we may be that on ramp to persuade a Ben Shapiro that mm-hmm. hip hop is music. Now, I think I would love to see it even bigger with 
Hopefully, I told Don to his face, I think you're going to come back around to the Trinity. I think that's a wild thing to deny. It's one of those orthodox things of of uh, of, of Christianity. Sure. But but you're right in that this whole notion of platforming someone mm-hmm. or this binary all or nothing, if I'm going to have a conversation with someone, I'm fully endorsing everything they've ever said, did, and ever say or or will do. Yeah. I, I just think it's, not, it's just so unfair to people that are genuinely looking to have conversations and figure out where people are at. Yeah, it's unfair and it's uncharitable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also a lot of it is driven by, by fear, Yeah, right? People are fearful of both having their ideas challenged Right. People don't people say they like to have their ideas challenged, but they really don't. It doesn't it, yeah. it doesn't matter what those ideas or beliefs are. Um, it takes a level of both competency and courage mm-hmm. to feel happy to sit down to someone who yes. has a very different position to yes. you on something. Yes. Even a, even some of the slight difference. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, to, to really sort of hash it out and yep. understand and have your ideas challenged and they poke holes in your yep. arguments and yep. all that. Yep. It takes some courage to do that and even more to do it publicly. Yeah. yeah. Even more to do it publicly. And the other thing that happens is you have so many tribes out there. Mm-hmm. And one reason why there's one reason why internet conversations can be really bad, especially in the short form, is that people are playing to their crowd. Yes. You know, there's audience capture and there's yes. just playing to your crowd. Yep. And it's a lot easier to just pick a lane mm-hmm. and go straight down that line lane and never step out of it, never break orthodoxy yes. than it is to kind of hover and float and be critical of, you know, your own side sometimes and yeah. be critical of this and yeah. that and, you know, not not be clearly put in a box. Because say if you just take the, let, let's talk politically, right? Mm-hmm. If you just go into the, you know, woke progressive left-wing box mm-hmm. and you just repeat their mantras and you say all their things and you only talk to people on that side, you stay away from those conservatives and mm-hmm. those righties and whatever, and you just repeat the things... You get attacked from the right, mm-hmm. but you get supported from your own team. Yes. If you just go full right wing and you just align with everything that you're sort of supposed to, yeah. and you, you know, you wave the flag and you use the right hashtags and you say the right things and you surround yourself only with these people and you just attack the other side, yeah. you'll get attacked from the lefties, but you'll be supported by your own base. Yeah. There's there's yeah. also monetary incentives to this, Hello. right? Hello. If you're somewhere in the middle, or even if you're like mostly that way or mostly that way, yeah. but you break orthodox, right? You mentioned Anna Kasparian, yeah. right? She's there saying, hey, can we use the word woman? Like, can woman be yeah. female? And nah, like, that's oh, heresy. Right? Yeah, that's right? heresy. It, exactly. And, and you're seeing how they're coming down yes. on her for that, right? Yeah. J.K. Rowling, even bigger example, yes. right? She's, mo- she's more left-leaning, yep. but they're like, oh my gosh, you know, burn yes. the heretic, right? Yes. Um, and the same can happen on the right end as well. Mm-hmm. And so if you're somewhere there, like you get the flack, you get the flack yeah. from both sides, and yeah. it's much easier to take flack from just one side than to be standing there and like you're trying to be nuanced and you're trying yeah. to be fair and trying to be balanced and trying yeah. to be objective. Yeah. And it's like, nope, like we're gonna, you know, you're just getting kind of flack from everywhere. Yeah, it's interesting how everybody has their own degree of orthodoxy, mm-hmm. which, by the way, within Christianity, that's important. Sure. <laughs> you know, sure. and one of the things like, uh, something like the trinity for example right it's like it's not it's not that controversial unless you have other presuppositions that you're bringing into the conversation so again in america we have a very hyper individualistic i'm going to read this bible on my own and i need to understand everything it says and if it doesn't make sense logical sense to me then well it's wrong mm-hmm. right that's a very like hyper individualistic show me the verse Mm -hmm. approach and it removes church history it removes critical thinking it removes nuance it removes all these other things and so i think that's why people will struggle with with certain things is they want binary all or nothing hyper individualistic i need to go get in the word by myself and figure these things out instead of saying "Whoa, whoa, whoa hold on let's let's back up and let's look at church history let's use reason let's think through these things a bit more instead of just saying I need, give me the, what is the, the give me the verse, right? Mm-hmm. And the same thing happens in, in all other spheres is people just want the very simplified version of something, the condensed, yes. hey, give me this, instead of saying, well, uh, let's reason amongst mm-hmm. ourselves. Let's figure these, because some of these things are complicated. It's hard. Some of these things are, they require conversation, but what you're getting at is, is the good faith aspect. Mm-hmm. And I don't think folks are, enough folks are willing to have good faith conversations, right? No. In that, though, the flip side of that is 
sometimes there are certain people I probably wouldn't sit down with, right? Mm -hmm. We were talking about like, I wouldn't sit down with Nick Funtes, mm -hmm. right? I probably wouldn't sit, sit down with Kanye right now because mm -hmm. I don't think it would serve either of them well. Here's a question. Would you sit down with him privately? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 not, yeah. not on a public Not, not, not publicly. Okay. Like, like, I don't know. Um, gosh, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Like, I don't know if I would sit down with Charlie Kirk publicly right now. Okay. Right? He Again, spectrums. Mm -hmm. Spectrums, right? Like Nick Fume says, and Kanye is way over there. Charlie yeah. is like, oh, I don't Why know. Why Charlie? Out of interest. I just think he's he, he, he tends to be so polarizing on things and mm -hmm. sometimes there'll be too much friendly fire i'll be i'll be very specific i wasn't gonna make a video about this but um he took some shots at greg glory pastor greg glory jesus revolution harvest dude 70 years old in the faith pastoring uh, amazingly no scandals not even a hint of a scandal amazing mm -hmm. person and so you know charlie does this whole riff on like uh, I would expect this from leftists like Carl Lentz and these like okay. celebrity pastors, but like not Greg Glory. Basically talking about pastors not being more outspoken about all the issues, right? Okay, got it. And which ironically enough, Greg Glory has been. So so to me, Charlie, you're either being unfair or you're ignorant mm. or you're being or you're you're being you're just dumb. Like, and I don't think he's dumb. I think he's poking and he's trying to get it to I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. But to take a shot at Greg Glory just makes me like kind of kind of side eye him, you know, a little bit. Do you know something I never do? But by the way, let me just say this. Go ahead. But I'm going to Arizona, okay. and I reached out to our mutual friend. I was like, I'd like to sit down with Charlie privately, you know. Okay, cool. I, I, and I also don't want to be the guy that like sits down with him and confronts him about mm -hmm. saying something crazy about my friend. About I'm my friend, like this is an elder. This yes. is a, you don't. This and it's not a whole other thing. There's a, there's a certain way in 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 Christianity that we talk about folks that are older than us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, yeah. and if somebody's 70 years old, not even, even in a, not even just in Christianity, almost well, I mean, in, I, in especially mo in most Christi cultures and in most cultures, too. actually, yeah. which is something that the West is. Yeah. So sort of lost. Charlie's in his 20s and he's just yeah. flippant with the way he's talking about a man of God who's been mm -hmm. serving Jesus for 50 years. It's a freaking movie, a, a top five box office movie about this man's life. And you're talking about he's not coming down on trans issues hard yeah. enough. Like, get out of here, man. So that is one reason why, like, I don't know if I would, because then I, and I'm also not passive aggressive. So yeah, if I'm yeah. sitting down with Charlie Kirk, explain what you said here. Why did you say you. this about him? You know, so that's, that, that would be probably why. Yeah. I would. You know, so, something I'm really cautious about. And one, something I, something I do not do is I'm very careful to not attack individuals. Yeah. I don't attack individuals. I, I can be brutal with bad ideas and I will criticize ideas, but something I'm very careful about in the public and online and even private space is to not just go at people. Mm -hmm. And I think, unfortunately, with the rise of social media and the way the incentive structures are sure. laid out and whatever, you can get a lot of juice by just like going at people 100%. who are popular, yep. right? You yep. can just, you can create a whole YouTube channel where, yep. okay, let me find the most popular YouTubers in this space and I'm just going to make videos. Just dunk on them attacking. all day. Yeah, not, yep. not, not, not the ideas, but I'm just going to dunk at that guy. I'm yep. going to put their name in the thing. I see this on Twitter all the time. Um, you know, people, I'm at this person and they just take a random shot. Yep. And again, I think that's, I think that sucks. Yeah, um, I, I think there's a way to attack so ideas without yeah. attacking the person. Absolutely, play you know the ball, I mean? not the man. Yeah, because I think we can get to the root of, hey, this is the, and we talked about some of this stuff, and we should we'll come back to the red pill stuff. But like, hey, here's the underlying ideology. This is why it's wrong. Let's exp explore that versus like, this is why it's wrong, and you're stupid, and you're stupid, and you're, and you're fat, you're and you're yeah. dumb. <laughs> you I, I don't like it. Do you, do you know something else that's happened as well, which is a shame over the past decade, especially in the U.S., but it, it's happened in my country and others as well. Mm -hmm which is just this overall coarsening of the way people communicate with each yep, other. Yep. And it doesn't help that the so-called leaders, right? Politicians, people in positions of power, like you can go on Twitter right now yep. and you will find grown men in their 60s, 70s, 80s yeah, yeah. taking shots at each other, calling yep. each other names, yes. like trying to dunk on each other, whatever. Yes. And I'm just like, this is, it didn't You people have always had their disagreements mm -hmm. and stuff. But even if you just look at how politicians communicated a few decades ago, it wasn't like calling each other names and taking shots and this and that. You know what I mean? It was it could get spicy, but it's it's become very juvenile. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that we're living in this bizarre time where we're <laughs> we're, we're sort of adults are behaving like children. Yep. And then also on the flip side, you are trying to treat you're treating adults like children whilst treating children like adults in certain cases. That's heavy. You're right. In, yeah. in, in many ways. And I'm kind of like. And the thing is, that gives a green light to people. So mm -hmm. this was actually one of my biggest criticisms of uh, of, of Trump, mm -hmm. right? Is that 
I know how hard the media went against him and yeah. he at least initially had to go kind of hard against them as well to to do what he did. But careful, the way careful, they, careful Zuby. Oh dude, no, I'm all, I'm all good, <laughs> right? <laughs> I yo, I love it. Yeah. I love it when conservatives can be critical of the goofy stuff within conservative circles. And you do that, and I just like, oh, come on. <laughs> Give me more. Because I feel like I'm the only one here. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm the only one that, like, I'm I'm substantially more overtly conservative than mm -hmm. I am when we first met. Yeah. But I'm also just as equally as critical. Yeah. And it's like, how dare you say something no. about Matt Walsh? No. He's like, that, that, that is the, uh, don't don't touch our our, our anointed. It's, yeah. it's, it's very religious, but go ahead. Yeah, go, no, go ahead. I, no, I, I get it. Go um, ahead and cook. I'm gonna let you cook. Yeah, no, Go no, ahead. no problem at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I've said like I'm British, but if I were American, I would have voted for Trump 2016 and 2020, no hesitation. Um, but the but the public persona, the 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 tweets, the behavior, the mm -hmm. way he's talking about other people at all, it it like I said, it's that it's that coarsening and that lack of oh, what's the right what's the right word? It's evading me right now, right? Just the the immaturity mm -hmm. of some of the conversation mm -hmm. and the unnecessary insults yep. and you know things like that like yep. it, it can go too far yep. and part of the problem is it it creates an environment where that is greenlit yeah right if yeah. the if the top leaders in the country are talking to each other yep. and even talking to the general public Come on. in such a way yes then it gives everyone else the green light to be like oh okay well it's fine to talk about each other it's fine to talk about each other that way I mean, but and, and you know what the sucky part is about what you said, Zuby? And I, 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 I don't like talking about politics often, but like, I'm not a fan of Biden, mm -hmm. which the, when people find out I didn't vote about vote for Trump, they always go, so did you vote for Biden? Go, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. I didn't vote yeah. for Hillary, didn't vote for Biden. But the, the frustrating part is that now is happening in an infighting. Mm -hmm. And so you got, you got DeSantis, mm -hmm. who... I actually think is the better shot at winning and beating Biden and moving the country along. Mm -hmm. Actually, in my opinion, actual progress. Yeah. And now because everything is greenlit, mm -hmm. it's about to be a super messy internal fighting amongst conservatives. And I'm just like, man, yeah. I, I, it's just, it's ugly. It's, it is juvenile. Like, it, it, it's it, gross. Is. It, it, it can be, it can, and, and that's also why, partly why people find it entertaining, because mm -hmm. uh, I've compared U.S. politics in particular to, I've called it WWE for adults, that's right? That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> Where it's just like, you've got the heels yep. and you've got oh, the yeah. face and oh, yeah. people are cheering and they got their signs literally wearing merch and whatever. And it's like, yeah, you go get him, you go get him. And the whole thing's, it's all a little bit fake and you're kind of in on it, but yeah. some people think it's all real. It's LARPing. And, yeah. It's LARPing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it gets kind of silly. So there's an entertainment value to it. But at the same time, you're kind of like, this is serious business. Yeah. Like, you have got the nuclear codes. Like, yep. Yep. you know, this is a country of 330 million people, yep. most powerful, most wealthy nation in the world. Yeah. We probably should have someone at the helm who can control yeah. their emotions and or, control their... Like, or you know. let them really wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 yeah actually, you know what I mean? That would probably make it better. <laughs> Just let them actually go, go wrestle. All the way. Go all the <laughs> go way, all man. The way. It'd be more entertaining that way. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's you're so right, man. And I, I, uh, I don't know, man. I'm mm -hmm. looking at it, and I'm looking at DeSantis, and I'm like, I mean, there's the progress. Like, yeah. if we want progress, like he held down Florida. No, the libs are gonna hate him, mm -hmm. but he, to me, he's more electable than Trump. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. I think so too. Um, you know, it's yeah. I mean, if again. And I'm sure I, I, I can find a bunch option, of stuff I disagree with DeSantis on as well. Of course you can. Well. Look, every, you know what every, mean? We, we, here's another thing that we we sometimes forget is that everybody is human, man. Yeah. This is something I think that gets forgotten sometimes, perhaps because we put people on pedestals and there's such a celebrity culture, which even filters down to, uh, you know, Twitter celebrities and YouTube sure. celebrities and whatever, where people have this expectation of yes. you to be... Not not just perfect, but to be perfectly aligned with them, Come on. right? So you can have someone who they've watched, they've been following you for two years, and they're listening to your songs, and they're watching your YouTube videos, and this and this, and then you do an interview with someone they don't like, or you have a take that they disagree with, yep. or whatever, and you get the, oh, you know, I used to, you know, I used to, I used to be yes. a fan, and now, you know, I've lost all respect for yes. me. I'm like, dude, if you lost all respect for me, yeah, because I talked to someone you don't like, yep. you didn't respect me. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> you, that's you, a fact. you didn't respect me well, if well, like one little the, thing is the, you're just another commodity though yeah. you're just a voice that they listen to 
and it just fills the time, mm. and then it, that could easily be replaced with someone else that agrees with them more. Yeah. It's not about actually uh, the transfer of information and mm. wisdom and knowledge. It's just literally like you get you it, you scratch my ears and you tell me what I want to hear. Yes. And the moment you break my definition of orthodoxy, yeah. then you're out. And I'm not talking about doctrinal orthodoxy. Mm. I'm talking about uh, cultural positions, political positions, social positions. And I think that's that's that, that's that's real. And do you know Do you know what it is? Is in this online world, especially. If you become, as you become a public figure and you gain more followers, subscribers, whatever it is, yeah. there is a segment of your audience that wants you to be their mouthpiece. Mm, yeah. They don't want they you want to, to live say, vicariously yes, through you. They don't want you to say what you actually Sheesh. believe and think. Yep. They want you to say, hey, he's got a million followers and I've got 37. Yep. So I want him to say what I would say if I had yep. a million followers. Yes. So you get the people who are there for you. But then you also have people who are there because they just want you to repeat 100%. the the lines. They want you to repeat the script. And, and people can fall fall victim to that. Like yeah. you, you can fall into that trap as a creator yeah. where you just become the person who is just affirming, to use the term, right? Yeah. You're just saying all the, all the things. You know, you're kind of just throwing out the red meat to your followers all the time. And there's a lot of juice in that. And there's a lot of money to that. It's like, cool, I've got these people. Yeah. I'm just going to keep on giving them. You know, if it means... If it means being, uh, you know, being dishonest a little, if it means yep. lacking objectivity, if it means promoting stuff that I know is not really good, or if it means dunking on this person yes. in an unnecessary way, or being in, you know, some, you know, I'm sure you've had these situations where you can tell someone is just being intentionally uncharitable yeah. and disingenuous, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the, you know, so, so what you're saying, right? You know, you, you say right, something right. and then, oh, it's, so, like, it's so, like, not what I'm not saying at all. It's like, no, I'm not <laughs> saying, you know, like they're just trying to misunderstand you. And I'm like, come on, man, you know, that's not, yeah. you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, I enjoy, I, I ate a banana this morning. Uh, so you hate oranges? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Like, you know, you know, that's not what I was saying. Why are you trying to come up with the worst possible interpretation right, right, of right. what I said? Yep. Hey, did you know that you can watch videos like this on the Spotify app. We now are on Spotify under Ruslan Bless God Podcast. So if you're driving and you want to go back and forth between listening to the podcast and just the audio or watching the video, consider doing it now on the Spotify app as well as all podcast platforms. All right, I'll see you over there. Have you been keeping up with um, Joe Rogan's seemingly evolution on faith in God and specifically Christianity. I have, yes. What do you what do you make of all for of many that? years? In fact, um, at the end of the first podcast I think we did in 2019, which mm -hmm. is a while ago now, mm -hmm. um, I actually brought this up mm -hmm. that I noticed his stance had been softening mm -hmm. on this because you know he used to be, you know the. the I think now he'd probably even consider himself perhaps more agnostic, mm -hmm. whereas before I think he was more explicitly atheist and even anti-theist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been listening to his show for for a long time, so yeah. you know he'd kind of mock religion and Christianity yeah. and just he you know just just be a, be flippant with it, say you know it's it's stupid. People just believe in fairy tales, that kind of stuff. Yep. But I think Jordan Peterson in particular, mm. actually, all those what six seven podcasts they've done together. Yes. I think Jordan Peterson helped to, despite himself not ever wanting to like explicitly say he believes in God mm -hmm. or that he's a Christian, his whole biblical series that he did many years ago yeah. and the way that he's talked and the way that he frames sort stories in the Bible and things like that, I know for a fact that that has caused millions of people mm -hmm. of all faith or no faith around the world yeah. to think about this stuff in a in a different way. Yeah. I think especially if you are an if you're an outsider, you have no kind of religious background or faith, and you're just raised in a very you know secular or atheistic family and yep. secular society. It, it's easy to just be there. There's I think there's two big types of criticism mm -hmm. of religion and Christianity. Mm -hmm. There's the very lazy. Oh, you, you're stupid. You believe in a, a sky daddy. Right? Sure, I can't, sure, sure, oh, sure. you know, mag magical sky fairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's all book, book of fairy tales. What, like there's, there's that, the very, the very lazy yep. sort of, you haven't bothered to really talk to anybody or right. understand. You haven't really even thought through what no, your argument is. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Um, you're, you're assuming that I'm smart and I don't believe in this. Mm -hmm. And so therefore anyone who does believe in it is stupid, yeah. which also doesn't make sense because you know for a fact that there are billions of intelligent Religious people around the world. It's, yes. just, it's just very lazy. Yes. It's as lazy as me saying, 
the only reason someone wouldn't believe wouldn't be a Christian or wouldn't believe in God is because they're just stupid. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, man. Like that's yeah. that's very lazy. Yeah. It's a straw manning. And then the other is, you know, a more, a more intellectual perspective where you have looked at the material and you have thought about it and you have conversations and you know that's that's a whole different level of criticism. But um yeah, I think you know, I think shout out shout out to Jordan Peterson and then I think um Many other people he's had on the show. Yeah, over seems the like he's had a time. lot of Christians on the yeah, show. Yeah, he's had. The last you know, of course, years. he's in the last year. He's had Seth Dillon. Mm -hmm. He's had Matt Walsh for some pretty difficult conversations. Yep. Yep. They they talked Th about thought the, Seth Dillon did a good job yep. about about the pro life conversation. Yeah, yeah. 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 and the, and th those are hard convos. Those are very hard conversations because they're they're passionate and mm -hmm. they're kind of unpleasant. Yeah, um, and it's quite easy to demonize the person who holds sure. a different position. It's very easy and it's very common. Yeah, and um. Yeah, I think that there was almost a moment there where I thought it was going to fall into that, but it yeah, you know, no, it came I, back out. That was it. a good, that was a good conversation. Yeah, it was, was a good convo. Good so I think so he seems like he's evolving. Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely evolving, okay. and I think this is. What do you think it'll take to close Joe Rogan on Jesus? Uh man, get him, get him, get him to a good church. Get him to a good church and uh, ex experience. You know, I think the experience of church is is very powerful. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, there are many people who are hesitant to enter a church because they're not I, I think so many people think you have to be all the way there yes and you have to be fully secure yes in your faith to even sort of step foot in a church right that yeah. I, I think people also have this caricature uh, this ex this especially exists in the USA and I can understand where it comes from because people can go too far mm -hmm. but you often see this caricature of um Again, I see many atheists using these sort of caricatures mm -hmm. of Christians, caricatures of religious people. Absolutely. Like, oh, they're just these, you know, yeah. angry, hateful, sure. right wing bigots yep. who yep. want to, you know, control attack, women's bodies, control women's bodies, yeah. and you yeah. know, attack, oh, yeah. attack gay people and yep. this and that. And I'm like, again, I'm kind of like, come on, man. Like, that's not a. Yeah. Have you met Christian people? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not it's just like whatever goofiness you're seeing yeah. on some little pocket of the internet, but like, go yeah. out there and talk. Go to go talk to your neighbor who goes to church. Right. Yeah. Like, walk into a church on a Sunday and talk to people and see the families and drink some coffee. And, right. you know, so I, I think, um, I think that would be a factor. I don't yeah. know how much of the Bible he's actually read yeah. in terms of like truly exploring the faith and sure. really seeing what it's about. Yep. But, um, I, th I think another factor, and this is happening as we said, is I personally think that the best form of proselytizing in, uh, in, in, in to it, use the official word, yeah, proselytizing. We just oh, yeah. say witnessing or evangelizing. Witnessing. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> like that, a that doctor. Was, he that, gave that, me the clinical <laughs> term. That was, that was literally the. I first... don't even know how to pronounce that word, man. <laughs> Goodness, that was literally the first word in my vocabulary. There, yeah. um, I, I think the way Christians live their lives, yeah, it's good, and who they are. I, no, knowing knowing the scripture is is important. Going to church is important. You know, having certain beliefs and whatever. Of course, that's important. But if you, it, it comes a little back, bit back to some of the things I was saying earlier, right? If you and, and Jesus himself, you know, talked about this, right? If you you have all the the legalism and the laws and this and this and you know the, but then the way you actually treat other people is very uh -huh. harsh and very nasty yes. and very unchristlike. Yes, then you're not gonna you're not going to win people over that way, Come on. right? The angry street preacher who's there literally yelling at people on the street, yelling at strangers that they're going to go to hell unless they repent and, you know, calling them names and this. I, I've got a story about this myself. I remember I used to sell my CDs on the street for many years in the UK. And um, I was in a city called Norwich, which is in the sort of east, the eastern part of, of England. Mm -hmm. And um, I was on the street you know, busy Saturday afternoon, talking to people, yep. selling my CDs, passing out flyers and hustling. so on. Hustling. He was hustling. out there hustling. Oh, yeah. Hustling, Come on. hustling. Um, and there was a street preacher there. And he was, uh, you know, he was very, very aggressive approach. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive not, approach. And, and to be fair, not all street preachers no, are like no, that. No, 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 yeah. not at all. Not yeah. at all. But he was not the kind that, very unchristlike, mm -hmm. literally yelling at people as they're walking past, literally telling people they're going to go to hell mm -hmm. and that they must repent and and so on. Yeah. And um, he he kind of saw what I was doing, and you know he came up to me and you know asked me about, and I you know, I told him yeah you know I I, I know Jesus like I'm, yeah I'm a, and he saw he saw my CDs mm -hmm. and he was like oh is this uh, you know is this gospel music is this mm -hmm. is this Christian music and I said not explicitly but mm -hmm. you know it's positive it's clean there's no cursing sure. it's got a positive and he and he literally he told me. I remember explicitly. He, he said, um, "He said that I was prostituting myself for the secular world 
and that I was going to go to hell unless I repented and that I should only make gospel music and like, like I'm, I'm, I'm already a Christian. Yeah. And I was like, bro, you're turning me off. Yeah. Right. I, I was like, I was like, if this is what these people out here are here, yes, like yes. You, you are, I was like, you are not winning over every, like, right. I admire your passion. Right. But this is not the it's way. Not no, no, this is not persuasive. I'm yeah. sure you've seen, you know, to, to even go out outside the, the religious field. I'm sure you've seen, you know, mm -hmm. vegans who will go and they'll cover themselves in blood and they'll lie, they'll lie yeah, in the yeah. streets and they'll scream at people. They'll yeah. see, they'll scream at you yeah. for eating meat and yeah. they'll call you a murderer yeah. Yeah. and this and this. But they'll be pro-choice. Often. Yes, yeah. all the time. You got to protect women's rights. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> kill, kill, kill. <laughs> delete, delete the fetus, but don't, um, you know, but don't, don't hurt the chicken. It's, yeah, there, there's a lot of yeah. weird things going yeah. on. But, but coming back to the point, yeah. um, oh, what was I just... You were talking about the preacher and you were like, hey, yeah. you're, not, you're not persuading anybody. Yeah, I was just saying, like, the way you win people over, honestly, like, in, in the real world is, is leading with kindness, yeah. meeting people where they are, leading with humanity. This doesn't mean, you know, you have to be so... This doesn't mean aff affirm everything and sure. accept everything sure, sure, and, sure. you know, yeah. don't point out error or anything like that. But I think you have to... For people to hear you, you have to you have to hear them first. Yeah. And you have to meet them on on a human level. No matter who you are, no matter what you believe, no one wants to just have that person come up to them and just, you know, uh, attack them, yeah. right? If, yeah. if it has the opposite effect, it causes you to think to create this caricature of, oh my gosh, right? Like, yes. you know, probably the worst caricature of of Christians that exists in this country is probably uh, what were they called? Westboro Baptist w Westboro Church. Westboro Baptist, right? That's right? There's people who literally when they think of, you know, Christians or the Christian right, yeah. that's who they envision. Right, and that does a massive disservice yep. to the ninety nine point nine nine percent of Christians who are not like that yep. at all. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, yep. And and so yeah, that's uh. Well, the, the beautiful part is you're actually echoing right here. First mm. Peter chapter two. This is the Apostle Peter writing. Says, "Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul." And then verse twelve it says, "Live such good lives among the pagans." That though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds mm. and glorify God on the day He visits us. Bars. I mean, that's that's literally everything you just said. Like this is, is going to be our daily lives. Now, the interesting thing about this verse is he he's writing to Christians, but he's talking about how as Christians we live as foreigners and exiles, right? And that even though we live as foreigners and exiles, we're still supposed to you know abstain from our sinful desires, mm. which wage which wage war on our soul. And then the whole like live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. The beautiful part about that verse is that's even what happened. The, the church subsequent of this. Mm. The early church was heavily persecuted under the Roman Empire, but it was their desire to go and rescue babies from the river that the Romans were discarding. It was their desire to... Uh, uh, give food and water to the sick that were discarded in, 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 in drenches. It was their desire to help people and serve people that slowly won the Romans over. Yeah. And then Rome more and more and more became more Christian over time, mm -hmm. but it was their it was their daily life, and so I th I think I think you're totally spot on. I'm, there's currently a petition. I'm not sure if you're familiar with who William Lane Craig is, but mm -hmm. there's currently a petition to try to get William Lane Craig on Joe Rogan. Oh, and, that would be great. And if there's anybody that can that can I think you know mm. persuade Joe Rogan, it would be William Lane Craig specifically because to me everything starts with the resurrection, mm -hmm. and then we can get into like is the scriptures the inspired word of God? And what about the Old Testament? And what about these hard verses? But I think William Lane Craig could do a good job of like narrowing down the resurrection, yeah. you know, and making that plain for Joe Rogan. In hindsight, when you watch that uh, interview back, because I remember watching it and I remember thinking... Um, Which interview? My one? Y your oh, interview okay. with Joe okay. Rogan back from uh, 2019. Um, did, you, did you feel nervous on that? Because that was like, I mean, that was a big deal. Especially, yeah. that, was a, that was Rogan at his peak. This is mm -hmm. before the Spotify yes. deal. This is Adam at his peak. And it, it, the interview felt weird in that, like, he didn't really interview you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you guys just kind of sat. I'm sitting mm. there like, is this how all the conversations go? You know, it yeah, even took a it, while to get to the whole breaking the women's deadlifting thing. Yeah. And like, the, and then it also felt like you were nervous. This was going to be my, like, challenge for Zuby on. It also felt like you were nervous to like kind of drive the conversation and yeah. you were kind of waiting for him to drive the yeah, conversation. Yeah, I was, dude. At and this, he never did. You guys just kind of meandered for a while. Yeah. Well, you have to remember at this point, um, I mean, I'm, I haven't, I hadn't even done a lot of podcasts, period. Okay. So you're new to point. the podcast. Yeah, I'm new to okay. the podcast game and I'm on the biggest one in the world. Mm -hmm. 
I've never, it was my second day in LA. I've never been to California in my life. Yeah. Right. I've just, and this is over. when Rogan was still in LA. Yeah. He was yep. still, he was still in LA at the time. So I was like, man, this is Joe, this is the Joe Rogan experience. Like I'm going to let him, I'm not going to come in here with like an agenda and topics or whatever. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, it's going to be a three hour convo. Yeah. I'm here for the ride. I'm going to let him steer it on that one in particular. Yeah. He, he meandered and talked about quite a lot of random stuff. Yeah. I thought the second half was actually a lot better okay. than the first half. Yeah. And I found it more engaging personally because yeah. it wasn't just kind of reacting to random stories and things like that. Yeah. And then um, I think our second podcast overall was better. Although on that one, it was, you know, during the whole C-19 situation. So sure. there was a lot of talk because yes. that was like kind of during the peak of the madness. Yep. Yep. So yep. there was a lot of convo that, um, that went to that. Um, but overall, man, dude, shout shout out to Joe Rogan. Yeah, big shout out to Joe Rogan. Such if he's watching this. an incredible <laughs> opportunity Amazing, to be man. on there. And just I, I think people underestimate how many people we now know and love and who Come are on. in the public eye, who he really helped to launch. He launched a lot of careers. He's launched so many, 100%. so many people. Yes. So many people. Um but yeah, I think uh, I think with someone like Joe, I think with, when it comes to Christianity, like, like it says in that verse, I think oftentimes people come to the faith not through, not directly through Scripture, mm-hmm. right? But by seeing how other people are living and how happy and content and purposeful and meaningful their lives are. Mm-hmm. And then they get curious, That's good. right? They're like, That's man, good. this guy lives, this family, this person, they live their life in a certain way, yep. which is very, especially in a time like this, Yes, right? I think we live in a time where it's kind of normal to be depressed and anxiety, mm-hmm. have anxiety, have mental health issues, be directionless, be just kind of all over the place. Yep. Um, and then you see someone who's more steadfast and yep. they're, you know, not, not, surface level happy but genuinely joyful joyful, who treats other people kindly and they're like man what's up what's up with this person why are they like that and then you find okay they're a christian you can get people who are like man they and and i know people like this i know people who want to be christians Mm -hmm. because of christians Mm. right like they they want to be and then they're like man i want to get there Mm -hmm. let me like see if i can understand these scriptures and you know let me let me learn more about it that way Rather than the other way around of like they start, I think both happen. Sure, there's people who start with the scripture and the, or they start with a more kind of like intellectual take. Sure, and then there's other people who are just like observing the world yep. and seeing how people actually behave. Yep, and they're like, hmm, who seems to be winning and who's who seems to be genuinely joyful and yep. happy and living in a moral way? Because yep. even even if you you're not a person of faith, and I believe this is implanted by God, right? I think C.S. Lewis, C.S. Lewis talked about this that we do have a moral compass, right? Mm-hmm. There is something where you do innately no. know yeah. right, right from, from wrong. wrong. Absolutely. Even if you can intellectually justify the wrong yes. and society is cool with it or even promoting it, yep. you kind of know on your gut level, like, yeah, this isn't really mm-hmm. this isn't really great. Yep. And you see this on a lot of conversations now. It, currently in the in the podcast and YouTube world, yeah. There's a lot of conversations about, you know, uh, you know, dating and relationships and men and women sure. and this and that and behavior and everyone, no one wants to cast any type of judgment or any type of moral hierarchy on mm-hmm. anything, right? Yep. In a totally secular society, you know, worst thing you can do is be judgmental or to say that X is better than Y. Like, no, you're not allowed to do that. Yep. Everyone just has their own thing and it's totally all subjective, yep. right? No yep. prescriptions. Right. No prescriptions allowed. Um, if you say that, oh, hey, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Maybe yep. that's bad. No, you're not allowed to do that, yep. right? You're the bad guy. Yep. Um, and so I think in that type of world, especially when someone does really have some morals and principles and things like that, it it stands out even yeah, more no, than perhaps good. it used to. And I think that people, you, you can tell even in some of these, you can tell when people are in denial. Mm-hmm. You can tell when like they're justifying something that they they know it's wrong. Yep. <laughs> they, 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 you can tell they, they they know it's wrong, but they're 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 still trying to they're trying to kind of conform to this thing and fight against their internal yeah. moral compass. Yeah. And and I understand that as well. Like no one wants yeah. to feel convicted. No yeah. one wants to feel like the way they're living their life or certain things that they're doing are not are not good. But they still know it. Yeah. And I find that I find that whole pattern sort of fascinating. Yeah. With the mental gymnastics someone will do. When you know, they know. Yes. Wait, that thing's you not know, good. You know, we know. Yeah, you I know, know that you know. Yeah, yeah we all but, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes and how that that plans out. Because I think, mm. that, I, th- I think you're right. I think there's something to doing life with people. I think there's something to 
both the intellectual and the practical um, and the historical, you know, and so I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful and I'm curious that that's been a journey he seems to be more open on. And yeah. that's, that's amazing. So, okay. Um, talk about being single. Talk about red pill. We're going to switch gears. Okay, to that. let's go. All right. We were having this conversation at lunch and, uh, and I was, we were talking about the red pill in particular, which yeah. I'm sure we can circle back around. And, uh, and you, you push back a little bit and you're like, Hey man, like, to be fair though, bro, you don't know what it's like to date in this climate. <laughs> like I understand a lot of a lot of you guys, like you've been conservatives, you've been married. I think the tr tr we're called trad cons. Mm -hmm. You've been married for a long time. You met your girl in high school, right after high school, and all that stuff is great. But you don't understand what it's like to date as a Christian in this climate. Yeah, tell me what it's like to date as a as a Christian in this climate. And then you have the 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 additional. I don't want to say it's a barrier, but variable of being a high value man based yeah. on the metrics that Kevin Samuels laid out, right? Your high status, you make good money, so on and so forth. So unpack some of that for me. Talk, okay, just talk about just Ooh. dating in this climate <laughs> as a Christian man, and yeah. then we can get into some of the other challenges that you face. Okay, well, first things first, I'm uh, I'm I'm off the market. Like as of a week ago. <laughs> okay, stop <laughs> acting like you've been in a committed relationship for a year. Hey, I'm uh, yeah, I know. I he know, got to put that just, out there just, in case just, she's just watching. Not, just hey, he's things. not single, ladies, but I think this is a relevant conversation. Uh, yeah, not to confuse anything. Um, <laughs> wow, yeah. So just coming coming back to the beginning is that stuff has really changed. Yeah, socially, culturally, and technologically. And I think the third one is the one that tends to be the most overlooked in terms of the impact that it's actually having on young men and women, but honestly, men and women of all ages who are still out there in the dating market, who are single, who are looking for whatever it is that they're, that they're looking for. Uh -huh. um, people often forget that prior to, to, when was the first iPhone? 2006, 2007? 2007, I right? think, yeah. It's only been since about, let's say, 20. 10 mm -hmm. since the combination of smartphones and social media has been ubiquitous mm -hmm. right when it's just been the norm to have yeah. both of these things and to be on we remember the world before smartphones absolutely yeah so you have to remember that even when you're talking to people just 10 years younger than yes. you when they were in school and whatever like they had smartphones they had instagram they they yeah. had they had access to all this stuff and yeah. then on top you had the dating apps and yes like, if you met your boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or husband on online dating mm -hmm. or even on the internet a decade plus ago like that was weird now it's probably at least half of relationships it's more common are, are starting that yeah. way um but what it's done essentially is it has just multiplied by many orders of magnitude how many options or perceived options are available sure so if you were uh, let's let let's talk about it from you know gender specifically right if you were a pretty girl mm -hmm. in the past even not I'm not even saying way back in 1950 mm -hmm. but even in the 1980s 1990s early 2000s your pool of suitors is going to be the guys and men around you sure right uh the guys at your school or your college or in your neighborhood right. in your town in your city at most mm -hmm. now you can be a pretty girl and you can literally have hundreds of thousands to millions of men all across the entire world yep. who are at least sexually interested in you sure this doesn't mean they want to date or marry you sure right yep. but they're interested in in something yep what does that do to the ego mm -hmm. right what does that do to the ego what does that do to someone's uh self-perception or what they think that they deserve this is why i think with guys like kevin samuels and whatever you know yeah. he had his almost like del the delusion you know in fresh i think they have their delusion calculator delusion right because every woman is yes. saying i want a man with this this and this and this yes and they think oh wow that's accessible because you know they're seeing it online and yep. they're seeing this and they're seeing that so it creates a very so uh false perception of both reality and of yourself mm -hmm. and then from the male perspective there's an element of that but it but it's different right because as, as a as an average guy, even as a decent looking guy, mm -hmm. unless you've got some special talent or fame or something that's going to get you like a lot of followers, it's not it's not that lopsided. But you have the fact that you are still seeing this infinite, um, to be a bit crude, catalog of women, right? If you're if someone's ever used Tinder or some of these other apps, you're literally swiping through human beings like a catalog, 
right? Yeah, that's crazy. It, it's, it's like it's like bro. a catalog, right? There's no you you've never spoken to them. Wow. You don't know anything about their personality, yeah. their values, what it's purely looks. Mm -hmm. Looks have always been, you know, the first thing that uh, certainly men will notice, but it that's all it is, mm -hmm. right? So you're just there and the 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 abundance, it's literally infinite, right? You're on Instagram, it's infinite. You, you see one girl, oh my gosh, like this girl's beautiful. You swipe, oh, she's even more beautiful. Oh, yeah. well, well, look at this one. Look at that one. <laughs> Sounds like you've done this yourself. Never, never, Ruslan. Never. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, listen, because um, I do, this is so foreign sure. to me. All of this okay. is so yeah. foreign to me. I don't yeah. even know what I don't even know what these apps look like. You know what Instagram looks like. I know what Instagram yeah. looks like, but you're talking about like Tinder and stuff. Yeah, well, Tinder is, I mean, it's literally just images that pop up and you see someone swipes left and then if they're trying to see left if, is a no right is a yes and so you, if, and if you both say people yes swipe right, and then they swipe then right while message. they're going through yours then you can yeah. message okay. and that's the only way wow. I, I don't even know what the other ones look like but i think it's very similar okay right and this is even different from the original online dating where you know like a profile it's more like a facebook profile yep. Yep, yep, interest yep. whatever this is just you know people are literally sitting there yep you know just going 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 um another thing that's happened is that you know and the People in the so-called red pill world or manosphere talk about this a lot, mm -hmm. which is the fact that so many young women, especially, are all chasing after the same five to 10% of men, mm -hmm. right? The reality of the world is that most men find most young women attractive, mm -hmm. whereas most young women find most men unattractive, mm -hmm. right? It's very lopsided. There's biological reasons for this. It makes sense if someone wants to go deep on it. But this creates this this massive skew, mm -hmm. especially when people are relying on this online stuff, mm -hmm. where you have a large segment of men mm -hmm. who are really not getting much attention at all mm -hmm. and are struggling to get dates and yeah. are unable to even think that they'll be able to get a girlfriend, let alone a wife, let yes. alone this, you yes. add on top all the economic and financial hardship and sure. so on. Sure. So you have a large increasing pool of men who are just like, hey, like, you know, there's there's nothing out there for me. Yep. Whereas in the past, it was just like, cool, you know, get your education, get a good job, be a decent person, take a shower yep. and, you know, you can you can attract a mate, you can find a nice sure. woman to settle with and whatever. Sure. Right. And then you've also that now then on the opposite end, you know, if you want the term high value man has become like Hold quite on, let's, cringeworthy. Let's, let's now go to high value. Man oh, OK. Just yet, OK. Because I, I want to kind of say. OK, some sure, of that. sure. But but I think what you're saying is valid. And we were talking about this and I just had this conversation with a family member of mine mm. of like, hey, look, you know, as a woman, most women, as long as you have hygiene, mm -hmm. <laughs> you finish puberty. And if you're hot, you're hot. Yeah. If you're beautiful, you're beautiful. Like it's. Is, nothing else has to happen. Yes. Right? And you can put post pictures on Instagram. You can go out in public. Guys may or may not approach you. But man, it's different. Yes. If you, you finish puberty as a man, you still have to develop and build yourself up to be someone that is deemed attractive. Mm -hmm. Right? Putting on muscle, right? Working on your physique, developing competency and different skills, mm -hmm. learning how to earn and provide, which mm -hmm. all of these different things are just barometers for competency. Yeah. I think I think we hopefully people know that that is the difference. And so to your point, yes, women are going to have more dudes that are going to slide into their DMs. Yes. Men are going to have less women slide into their DMs unless they've already been working on themselves and creating and chiseling themselves into mm. who they should become, right? Yeah. My my question would be shouldn't we then just be instructing men to become more like tipping the scales in their favor mm -hmm. to develop the competence, to develop the physique? And to become the type of person that could provide, protect, and lead a home. Absolutely. And okay. that's why the red pill world has become so popular. Mm -hmm. That's why it's exploded and popular. By the way, for people who are just coming across that term now, this community has existed They've for been around forever. Over two decades. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's in on the internet, it's been it's been around for over two decades. Started with, you know, public forums mm -hmm. and now, you know, you've got YouTubers and podcasters and, and so on. It's been redefined a little bit. Sure. It's kind of had a new surge in popularity and a bit of a change sure. in meaning. With a, sure. But, 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 but so, let me, let me yeah. rephrase that. But Go I ahead. think sometimes what the red pill does is then they backdoor a victim mentality instead of just giving oh, the prescriptions I think that they, men I think they back, a lot of stuff can get backdoored, yeah. right? Um, but I think, yeah, absolutely, the message of men to... Three things you'll hear a lot in in these in manosphere circles yep. is um you know money muscles game yep right um which is that okay that that's solid right you know yep. get your get your money in order yep right with that comes 
being ambitious, developing your skills, mm -hmm. getting your education, yep. you know, working hard, mm -hmm. all this stuff, you know, I preach, you preach, yep. it's important, yep. right? If you're going to have, uh, if you're going to have a family yep. and you want to attract a woman, you need an ability to be competent and to provide, yep. right? Muscle. Hey, you know, put get, some get, muscle on. Get, you can't, get, can't get, look get like your, a scrawny kid your yeah, whole life. Get, get, yep. get, get your fitness in order, right? Yep. Don't be, you know, obese, yep. get, be a healthy body weight, yes. you know, build up your muscles to a good degree. Yep you know, have a lower level of body fat, you know, make yourself physically attractive. With right. that, you can also add, you know, dressing well, grooming, yes. hygiene, that kind of yes. stuff, right? Yes. And then game. Game has a negative connotation to some people, mm -hmm. but really what it is is social calibration and social skills, sure. right? Being good at communicating, sure. developing your sense of humor. Sure. Game doesn't just apply to like macking on women. Yep. It's like, cool, that guy's good at communicating, He's right? persuasive. He's persuasive, yeah. right? You can, you can lead, you can do all that. So that prescription is is solid yes right i think um where a lot of people would then would would take issue with it is some of the things that then go go beyond that yeah right um especially if it's coming from a prescription but then there are also people who would say look we're just trying to understand the situation and we're trying not to prescribe anything we're just to explain what is going on with these gender dynamics and so on but i think coming back to the original question the point is that in the past 15 years, let alone 20, let alone 30 years, the social and cultural and technological environment, the teenagers and people in their early, let's let's say from teenagers to mid 30s, mm -hmm. um, the environment that they are in when it comes to dating and relationships and everything like that, it is vastly different. If you talk mm -hmm. to a lot of uh, young teenagers or people in their in their 20s. Mm -hmm. There's very little exclusivity, mm -hmm. right? Men and women are just dating for the sake of dating, for the sake of fun, not knowing you might have a woman who's dating five guys at once, a guy who's dating seven girls at once. None of them are really like talking about exclusivity yeah. or trying to see if their values align for a potential marriage or yeah. this or that. It's just, it's very directionless. Mm -hmm. It's very directionless. And in the absence of some type of traditional framing or religious framing or anything like that, yeah. it can often stay like that for many, many decades. Yeah. And you have many people who are promoting and pushing that type of lifestyle all, all over, all over the spectrum. Yep. Um, yep. So it's a, it's a strange so, situation. So, so, so my solution, which is much like Kevin Samuels's mm. solution, one of the few times I would hear him talk about marriage is in the confines of people staying married, who they have kids with, yeah. and then in the confines of an Ikea marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, he also said a bunch of stuff I disagreed with, like high-value men cheat and they should. Mm -hmm. That's a direct quote. I didn't make that up. You guys yeah, that was a bad that. one. I wish you didn't bad say one. that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but this idea of building an Ikea marriage, right? Yeah. Somebody said, how can somebody get married young if they have to develop themselves, yeah. right? And I would say, well, I told you, I, I'm not exaggerating. This is not exaggerating. I know about 100 couples mm -hmm. who all got married in their early to mid-20s mm -hmm who built lives together mm. before they had the money, the muscles, and the game. They built these amazing lives together. The way you assemble IKEA furniture, yeah. don't come assembled. Nobody delivers. You got to get it in a box. You got to assemble it. It's the same way. It takes a little bit more work, but there's nothing like building something together, yeah. right? So I think the frustrating part is like, and I don't know if the red pill intentionally omits the IKEA marriage. Okay. Let me be very specific. The Christian IKEA marriage. I don't okay. know if it intentionally omits this, or if it's just disingenuously ignorant that the a lot of folks who are going to have lower body counts, mm -hmm. higher values, be women that are more willing to submit to mm -hmm. men that can lead, are going to be in church, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's like if I personally know 100 couples, 100, Zuby, 100, that's 200 people mm -hmm. that love Jesus, were virgins, or very low body counts, got married in their early 20s, started families, building lives, have babies— and they're thriving and they're flourishing. That's yeah. just within this proximity. To me, that would imply two things. Selection bias on my part, because mm -hmm. I'm in a different ecosystem of different mm -hmm. types of people who have different family dynamics and different values, and a uh, uh, selection bias on the part of the red pill. Yeah. Is that a reasonable conclusion? Um, I, think it's, I think it's true. I think there's more to it than that. So I think from a red pill analysis of things, I think it, the red pill is intentionally secular. Sure. Right? Not meaning that if you, you know, that it's not for someone who has religious faith or anything, but the way they frame things and analyze things, it's intentionally not relying on any sort of 
scripture or I get that Christian perspective, sure, right? Sure, sure, sure. And then I think there are two there are two things that are often not discussed. I've I've had so many discussions even with my own Twitter followers mm-hmm. about this this whole situation, right? You know, people are like, oh, you know, I married my high school sweetheart and this and this. Mm-hmm. And I think two things are, are are massively missing. And this is perhaps a blind spot from the more traditional conservative mindset beyond the changes that I already mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, the first is that f- those young people have to already know that that's what they want. Mm-hmm. There are most people in their late teens, early 20s um, in this here and now, it used to be different many years ago yeah. and it's still different in some parts of the world. They're not even sure at that point that they want to get married mm-hmm. and they want to have a family, right? In so, terms of Zoomers maybe being a little different. Yeah, this this is what I mean. So I'm sure if you if you polled the average 18-year-olds mm-hmm. in the US and you were like, do you want to get married? Do you mm-hmm. want to have a family? Whatever, you know, do you want to make that commitment? Mm-hmm. Like it's for so many, it's not on their radar, mm-hmm. right? That's something that they're going to start thinking about maybe in 10 years time. Mm-hmm. So... The idea, like what what you are prescribing, and these hundred, I'm prescribing plus, Jesus and yes, church. Yeah, and that's <laughs> very and, and, clear. And, yeah, as you should, right? You're you're a Christian, right? <laughs> um, so for all these hundred couples, you know, yep. I would assume that they intentionally that is what they wanted. That's what they were yes, seeking after correct. from a relatively from a young age. Sure, that's what they knew that they wanted. So yep. the majority of them, they're in that environment. Yep. They're surrounded by that, and so on. A lot of people. Even if they have that realization of, hey, actually, I want to get married. I want to have a family. They don't realize that until later. Mm-hmm. Even I myself went through a short phase, probably no more than a year, of like, oh, maybe it would be cool to just be like a bachelor for life. And, you know, I can just keep my money and I don't need to worry about this and this and this. And then, like, I got to a point yeah. where I was like, no, that's stupid, right? Like, well, that, that's that's yeah. fruitless, right? Yeah. Um, but for a lot of people... I think a lot of men won't get there until their late twenties, early thirties, and that says a lot. In terms of their mindset, in terms about their mindset, okay, right? And fair. even even the women, right? Even the sure. women. You talk to young women, and they're like, you know, a man is not in the top five things they're looking for. Yeah. Right. Career, education, having fun, their freedom, mm-hmm. their this, their that. Like it's not in. It's it's not, until they get to thirty plus, mm-hmm. they're not thinking like, oh, I'm looking for a husband, mm-hmm. right? Some of them are even put off by the idea. So there's that, and then also. Th- these things are linked together. There's also the fact that, um, and I, 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 there are people who, I, again, I, I think they very much mean well, but I think they completely miss out on the fact that, hey, not everyone meets the person they want to marry when they're 18, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Like I, I, I know people who, you know, they, they married their 16-year-old sweetheart or whatever, and they've been married for 40 years. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's amazing. That's, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, not every 16-year-old meets like the woman or the man they should marry. Yeah, yeah. Which, at, which, which I'm not saying they will. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not saying but they will. What, what I'm saying is that for that for that IKEA marry, marriage to happen early, yeah. you do have to meet a person. Let me not say the person. You have to meet a person. Yeah. Where cool, that's both what you want. You've both got your head screwed on enough sure. to know this is the commitment we want to make. Sure. And I also I'm confident enough that this person on both sides yeah. is the right individual. And I, I know people who literally like they met, they, they literally met the person they're going to marry at 12. Mm-hmm. Other people, they met them at 32. Yep. Other people, they met them at 22, you sure. know, at, at any sure. point. And yeah. I also think, and again, people have, people have different views on this one, but I'm of the view that it's better to, uh, you know, I think oftentimes from the conservative perspective, people really push, people push getting married young, sometimes more than getting married right. Sure, that's fair too. And you see the results of that, right? There yeah. are a lot of people who do get married young, sadly, and by before they're thirty, yeah. they've already had a divorce. Yep. Yeah. And this is the sucks. average age, by the way. To sure. The national average age uh, for marriage today in the United States is twenty-seven years old mm-hmm. for women and twenty-nine years old for men. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, of course, varies from state to state. Most people will marry between the ages of twenty-five and thirty, which yep. I think is a—I think that's a fine age too. Yeah, but look up the UK because UK is several years older than that. UK is older. UK, they're both going to be. I think UK is like thirty-four and thirty. Let's see. People get married younger in the US than they do in the UK and most of Europe. Thirty-one. Yeah, the thirty-one. What is it for men and women, though? I think it's thirty-four for men is in the it? UK. Let's yeah. See. You said for men. I think so. Yeah. I think for both men and women, it's over. 33. Uh, average yeah. age of uh, marriage, first time marriage, has risen by eight plus years. Yep. 31 for women, 34 for men. The, pro- the proportion of women who have ever been married by the age of 30 just dropped uh, below a half yep. in 2002. It now stands at a third, yep. having fallen from nine um, in 10. So this is what I would say. Yep. I, I, I think I think what you're saying is, is reasonable. Mm. Um, I think there is absolutely women 
men should stay away from. Oh, yeah. And there's men women should stay away 100%. from. Right? I think the, the, the tricky part to me is if we look out at a demographic of people and we find out that out of all these different tribes of people, these guys over here tend to be the most in shape and have the best BMI and the lowest body fat percentage. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't, if, if those folks over there are the leanest and have the best muscles and got the best body, and I aspire to build muscle, mm -hmm. wouldn't I want to go over there and examine why are these people so successful? Absolutely. This, right? This is the point I was making earlier about Christians leading by leading by example. Leading by people example. People wanting to be like them. Right. And so if we look at, and we look at Christian marriage versus secular marriage, mm -hmm. which by the way, this entire notion that there's a 50% divorce rate is nonsense. It's mm -hmm. close. It's between 35 and 40. That was a false statistic given based on when no fault divorce laws passed and mm -hmm. what they were projecting the divorce rate mm -hmm. was. It was. It's, it never actually hit 50%, yeah, yeah. which is another red pill talking point, yeah, yeah. which is nonsense. I think most people say 40 to 50. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's cl it's closer to 35. Okay. It's 35 to 40 in terms of folks that 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 get divorced throughout their lifetime. Sure. And so if we, and then the folks who get divorced are more likely to get divorced. Yeah, yeah. But then we look at Christian marriage and we find out that folks who go to church regularly mm -hmm. uh, and are, you know, practicing their, practicing their faith, taking their faith seriously, and those folks end up getting divorced at the lowest rates. Yes. If those folks have a slightly above average income, mm -hmm. the whole divorce rate plummets. Yep. So... Most men are going to want kids. Mm -hmm. Most women are going to want kids. Mm -hmm. Who you have kids is the most important decision. You, I think you, who you marry and who you have kids Agreed. with, by Agreed. far the most 100%. decision you're making. So if we're seeing these folks over here who are creating healthy, stable families and healthy, stable environments, and they're staying married and they're flourishing, wouldn't we want to go and investigate and say, what is it about these Christians that are married for decades and decades at a time? Yeah. Instead of acting like they don't exist, which the red pill does. Yeah. You, you, you know, one of the, one of the biggest... Flaws or omissions I see from a lot of red pill um, creators and people who speak on it is the lack of contextualization of statistics. Mm, that's good. Right? Yeah. Statistics are useful, but they can also be very misleading. Oh, yeah. Right? And there's no point, if you're using a statistic, you have to contextualize it, especially if you want to apply it to yourself. Right. So yeah. the average man, the average man can do zero pull-ups. That's crazy. Right. Is that true? The average man can do zero pull-ups. The average man can't do any no. pull-ups? Zero. Gosh. Right. Less than half of guys can do a pull-up. Okay. Most men can't do more than 10 push-ups. Right. If you can do over 10 push-ups. Bro, this is embarrassing. <laughs> it's terrible, dude. You have to remember, dude. Is this real? Over 70% of the population is overweight and overweight. obese. Right. <sighs> right. Like, dude, look, walk around the walk around the U.S. and like look at the average man. Right. He's yeah. really not in shape at all. Most people can't even hold a squat position. They can't get, most people can't touch their toes, man. So, but as someone who trains. Yeah. Right. I don't care about the average. Yeah. The average is totally irrelevant to me mm -hmm. because I've been working out for 20 years. So Just, uh, the fact that I'm not celebrating, hey, I did one pull up, like I'm better than average. Yeah. It's like, no, like I'm trying to knock out 30. Yeah. Right. That's if the, you, is, that, is that your record? 30? Uh, 28. 28. 28. 28. I think yeah. I got to 24. Yeah. 24, yeah. 25, but I was yeah. a little slow. to 28 clean ones. Come on. Um, <laughs> they weren't clean. My, no. <laughs> my 25 weren't clean, but I could definitely, I could do 20 clean. Yeah. 20, do 20 that's, clean. That, that's top 1%, man. Yeah. Top 1%. Good awesome. job. Um, so if you are, say, if you're, but if you're in the one percent, yes, yeah. with fitness, mm -hmm. that could transfer that that, that yeah. mentality could transfer to other areas. Absolutely right, and and so or if you're looking at marriage statistics, right, you have to remember when when you're saying that there is a let's say a thirty five or forty percent divorce rate, mm -hmm. you have to consider that is including everything and everybody. Sure. Okay. If you are super Mister Average Joe, and you have no faith and no fitness. And your money is average or below par, and yeah. your morals and convictions and willpower. If you're just you're there, you're a sloppy, individual. right? If you're if you're super sloppy, then okay, like that stat applies to you. Yes. If you have your stuff together, if you're there and you're earning a good salary, yes. and you're well educated, yep. and you've got like your stuff, then look at the. If you want to look at statistics, look at the statistics for your demographic. Yeah, it's good. Do you see what I mean? That's right. Good, why good. why are you looking at the the total average yeah. ones? Yep. When, if you're not, you know, I I I, I think. One of the biggest keys to self-awareness mm -hmm. is knowing when you are the norm and knowing when you are the exception. That's good. We all have things that we are average, 
right? There's yeah. many things in the world that like I'm average. Yep. And then there's things where like I'm exceptional. Like I'm way, way, way above average in certain things. Sure. And so the statistics, there's statistics that just don't apply to me. Yeah. Right. That 40% d- divorce statistic does not apply to someone like myself. It doesn't apply to someone like yourself. Yeah, it's good. Right. You're earning a good salary. Mm-hmm. You have religious faith. Yep. You're picking well. You have to remember how many people pick, like, like people pick their husband. Or, there are people who pick their husband or wife very stupidly. Come on. There are people who get married and then they end up getting divorced because what? One of them wants kids. The other one doesn't. Bruh. Bruh. How do you not? Yeah. You how do you not you, know that? You, you didn't have the how conversation. How do you not know that? You didn't have a conversation. Not yeah. even like, how many kids do you want? You didn't even say, do you want kids? Do you even you, want You kids? wait until you've done this and you've tied the knot and you've gone through all this. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, so yeah. And they're like, wait, oh, you want kids? Yep. Like, bruh, like, people make really, really dumb yeah. decisions. People people get drunk in Vegas. Come on. And they, and they so all of this, all this is falling Elope, into the statistics. Pull up You're, to the courthouse. All of this is happening. Don't of this, tell any of their loved ones. All of this is happening. <laughs> all this is included in the statistics. Also included is people who had their third, fourth, fifth, sixth yeah. marriage, right? So yeah. with these statistics, I think it's, it's very good to know what they are, but you have to contextualize them. Yes. And I see this happening so on so many issues. People are just kind of taking data and stats and throwing out numbers out there, yeah. but they're not they're not contextualizing it, yeah. right? Yeah. There are people who will not come st- step foot in the USA yeah. because it has, I think the US has about four to five times the homicide rate, say, of the UK, mm-hmm. okay? So there's people in the UK or in Canada or in Australia, like, they look at the stat yeah. and they're like, I will not go to the USA or I will yeah, not go crazy. to Chicago. Yeah. Where is that happening, Yep. right? Yep. The vast majority of the US yeah. is pretty darn safe. Yep. There are pockets. There's there places- are pockets. Places, little spots in cities, yep. especially if you're involved in gangs or some other stuff where, okay, like that part, that place is dangerous, man. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you can't go to the whole place. That's I was good. this earlier this year, I was in Johannesburg. I yeah. was in Cape Town, right? Yes. South Africa has a reputation. Oh my gosh, you're going to Johannesburg. Like, so you're going to, Sco-. I'm like, I'm not going to go to the sketchiest areas sure. and be hanging around on yep. there with a rollie on like at 2 a.m. Yep. Right. Because this is wisdom. That, 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 that's dumb. Um, this is wisdom. So what I'm, my point is, yeah, with all these statistics, I, I think they get thrown out and they get repeated and they yep. get parroted and sometimes they even get inflated, but no one is saying, oh, wait, hang on. Actually, if you earn over a hundred thousand a year, yep. I think, I think the divorce rate drops below 15%. It's low. It, it, right. It, with the more like, you, over 200, it, it, fall, it, it falls it, off yeah, a cliff. Yeah. Okay. So say household earnings over yes. 200,000. Yep. Don't quote me on this. It might be like under 10%. Yeah. And then you add the religious faith on top of that. Or Least you add likely. the other things on top, right? Like, yeah. so once you stack a couple of those things, if sure. that is who you are, yes, then don't be running with the oh my gosh, there's a it's a coin toss because because yes. it, it's not for you, yep, right. And the fact that you are even thinking about it, yep, means that okay, like you you're gonna you're gonna choose more selectively and so on. So you're gonna be more careful. Yeah, this this yeah. is where I think you know there's there's so much value in raising awareness of these things. I think yep. it's very important for men in particular yes. to know the potential downsides absolutely of some of these things. I think it's good to hear the horror stories and it's good to hear about the mistakes people have made and the things people have done wrong. I think it's good to talk to people who have been through these things and be like, all right, like what would you have done differently or this or this, but don't only listen to the horror stories. Don't only listen to the people it went bad for, right? Talk to people who are in successful long marriages, talk to people who have done this, who it's working for. Hey, how did you, how did you meet your spouse? How did you know that she was the one? How did you know this? Like, ask ask for advice. Mm-hmm. My parents have been together almost 50 years, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm blessed and I'm very fortunate that I, I'm in such a position. Yeah. So I'm like, cool, I want, I want advice on some of this stuff. I have so many elders. I have people in my own family, yeah. so many friends, family friends who have literally been together decades and decades and decades yeah. and have very happy families. Yes. They're still madly in love and yes. so on. And I'm like, cool, like, hey, what's the secret? Yep. How have you done Hello. this? Like, you know, and, and it's right there. So, and me, I think, go ahead. Last point on this. I think part of the problem as well is that people who are in long term, happy marriages and so on, they're not usually making YouTube videos and right. running podcasts and yeah. doing like, like they're just doing their thing. Yep. They're kind of quiet. Or, or in my case, like I'm, I don't put my wife you don't, in, yeah, in you, public. You, yeah. It's, you it's know? not, it's not so public, right? Sure. So people know you're married. Yep. People know about this, but like, they're not seeing it. And I understand the privacy angle, but I think even, I know for myself, do you know the thing that motivates me most to uh, want to get married and want to have kids hmm. is seeing other people, men in particular, mm-hmm. 
who are dads and they're having a great time yep. and they got their kids and they got their wife and whatever. And I'm like, man, that's a flex. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's dope. You know, like, yep. I, like I want that, like, yep. like seeing it, yep. I think is extraordinarily yeah. powerful. And sadly, there are many people out there. The truth is there are millions of people out there yeah. who, who are, are not, are, they're, they're not seeing it. Like you, you yeah. see it every day. You're in all your church. Time. You got your friends. You're seeing it all the yeah. time. Yeah. But there are many people out there, both men and women, who they just don't see. It didn't work out for their parents. It didn't work out for their friends' parents. It didn't work so out. The need for inspiration. You see what I mean? Where's the Where is the Christian version of the Bugatti? Wow. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, yeah. like, because I think more men want what you just described mm -hmm. than than they actually want the Bugatti. Yeah, the Bugatti is a symbol. But you'll take Bugatti. the Bugatti if you, if you don't. But the, if you don't the, think but, you but I think most first. of yeah. us want legacy. Yes. I think most of us want kids. So what would happen if everybody made hundred k a year? Um, I mean, things would be more expensive. Okay. But most likely the overall cost of, you know, the overall standard of living would be higher, right? Countries where people earn tons of money, stuff tends to be more expensive. Okay. Um, same reason California is more expensive than Ohio, mm -hmm. right? But people earn more people in earn more. California, people earn more specifically in, you know, San Francisco or something. Um, some of the most expensive countries are places, you know, Scandinavian countries, Iceland, Norway, um, you know, Dubai is actually pretty expensive because people make a lot of, you know, Switzerland, Switzerland's very expensive, but people make a lot of money. Yep. But Mi um, minimum wage in California is $15 an hour. Okay. So, yeah, I think in Norway, it's like about, I, I don't, don't think they have an official one, but I think no one earns kind of under about $25 an hour. Yeah. Even though it's not like a state sanctioned minimum wage. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think th this sort of stuff becomes self-fulfilling prophecies in people's yeah. lives. You start, you start thinking these things, you start believing these things. And to me, it would, it would be the equivalent of saying, um, there's no way everybody can be in, in healthy shape. Yeah. No, it's just wrong. You know, you know, I have, I have two big thoughts on this. Number one is my, my best advice I can really give to young men. If we're just being practical and we're thinking about individuals rather than systems is you, you can't just be average. Come on. You have to strive to be better than average. That's, right. That's just the reality of it. That's I'm not right. going to sit here and just be, like, Oh, just, just be average. The truth is average is pretty poor these days yep right the average person, average is 38k a year yeah less in my country yeah um average is overweight average is unhappy yep. and pretty depressed you know i think only fewer fewer than half of americans i believe have a positive net worth yeah that sounds about right yep most people don't most people are under zero yep. which is crazy because like it doesn't seem like that on the surface yep. but most people are in debt so the truth is as a man you, you, you can't afford to be average anymore. Yep. I think that is also a bit of a, an issue for society and culture. Okay. Because I think that we are increasingly moving to a time period where average isn't good enough, mm -hmm. which is which is a bit of a concern, right? Average used to be good enough. Sure. If you were in the, I don't know, like from what I understand, you know, the, the 1940s, the 1950s, mm -hmm. the 1960s, like the average was okay. The average person was in good shape. Mm -hmm. The average person had a healthy BMI. Mm -hmm. The average person was earning enough money to get married and have a couple of kids. Buy a home. And to buy a home buy and a so car. on, right? Yeah. So yeah. some of these things are running away, um, not not in an equal fashion, right? Yeah. Like they're, the, some, of, some of these things are running away. Like when my dad, I'll, I'll tell you something that's going to blow people's mind, even just in terms of um, how severe inflation actually is in real life. Mm -hmm. My dad is a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Father of five, family of seven. Um, when he first came to the UK, it would have been family of five mm -hmm. in the in the seventies, nineteen seventies. As a medical doctor in the UK, mm -hmm. how much do you think he earned per year? Medical doctor UK in the seventies. Yep, forty grand a year. Four thousand pounds per year. Wow. Okay. Four thousand per year. Jeez. Okay. Under under four hundred pounds per month. Sheesh, man. Family of five, you could afford, dude. This is what you could buy a house for nine or ten thousand pounds at this time. So, mm. I I believe in the UK. I don't know the numbers for US, but in the UK, I know that the average house mm -hmm. price used to be about three to four times the average salary. Yeah, that, that's the same thing in America. Yeah, now it's about 10 to 12. It's like eight to nine here. Uh, yeah, seven seven to ten. I okay, think in yeah, in the yeah. UK, yeah. it's about ten to twelve. Yeah. So. That is an actual problem. Yeah. Right? Because right. th th this means that average is no longer yeah. good enough. If well, it's not even average. I mean, he was a doctor. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I, I know he was a doctor, right? So he, he was above average, right? But 
in that time period, you know, you could have been a postman. Yeah. You could have been, uh, you know, just an electric, a teacher, a teacher or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, you could afford to buy a house. So I do think there are some stuff at the sort of systems level thing yeah. where we need to, we want to push towards a society where, you know, it's two things. Strive to be better than average. Yep. But we also want to, we, we should create an environment where average is good enough. Come on. Right? Yep. We, the average person should not be broken out of shape. Yep. Right? You don't need to be like ripped and jacked and, you know, making tons of money. But there's a problem in society where the average person's fat. That's yeah. a problem. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and, and this <laughs> that's is a problem. And this is where I think Christians are an advantage. Mm. If we go to Philippians chapter two, this is the passage about salvation specifically, right? And this is Paul writing the church in Philippi. And he says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, as you always have obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, right? So work out. That, that, that you're saved, that you're born again, work that out, right? Faith without works is dead. But here's, check out the verse 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in orders to fulfill his good purpose. Mm. That we are called to work out our salvation, mm. but God is working in us from the inside out. And if we look at the NLT translation, this one this one is even is even better in my opinion, better. I mean, they're all great translations, but check it out what it says in the New Living Translation, right? Verse 12, it says, it says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire mm. and the power to do what pleases him. Having great work ethic pleases mm. him. Mm -hmm. Taking care of your body pleases him. Being a loving husband pleases him. Being plugged into your local community pleases him, right? So I, I believe that the, the born-again Christian who was once spiritually dead and now they're spiritually alive, their heart is now a heart of flesh, I think is at an advantage to make those better decisions to go from being average to being above average. Yeah. At the very least. Yeah. I think the, the, the issue is that w w all of this is about mentality. Because if you if you believe that life is a zero sum game, little guy can't ever get ahead. It's all doomed to begin. Hey man, it's a twenty eighty principle. Twenty percent of the people mm -hmm. are gonna take up eighty percent of the wages. Yada 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 yada. Okay, cool. Let's say all of that nonsense is true, which yep. I think it's nonsense. But let's just say it's also true. You still are at an advantage to be different than everyone else because yep. you have the spirit of God living in you. Your body's not your own. Your life is not your own. And you get to be different from the inside out. You yep. get to transform and, and change the way you handle your eating and change the way you, you you work and show up early and work harder and be friendlier, right? And so it, it, it's it's frustrating to me when, when when especially when Christians are just like, oh, yeah. I'm just, life sucks. Yeah. It's going to be you know, terrible. <laughs> the, the, the I'll never get ahead. Mentality. Yeah, I'll never get yeah, ahead. And, and the truth is, man, look, this is going to sound harsh. I'm not trying to, you know, do, a, do an Andrew Tate here. But if that's your mentality, then you don't deserve to succeed. Mm. Ouch. Right? It's, it's true. Yeah. If that's your mentality and you're not willing to put in the work and you're not willing to compete at all yep. and you're not willing to better yourself, yep. you, like why? Again, you know, pe people laugh at... um. You know, some of these shows like Kevin Samuels, right? You've got a woman who's who's done no work on herself mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. What type of man do you want? Oh, I want him to earn 150000 yeah, yeah, yeah. I want him to be six foot two. I want yeah. him to be six. Yes. And it's like, well, what yes. about you? Yes. Right? Yes. Like, what, what about you? And yes. men can do the same thing. Yes. Where it's like, I want this. I want that. I want this status. I want this money. I want yes. this. And it's like, okay, well, you know, how... How much work are you putting in? What value are you providing to other Come on. people? Come on. What product, service, anything have you created yes. that other people value economically that is going to help you? Like how, yes. you know, how, look at yourself, yep. right? Would yep. you date yourself? Do yeah. you think you're worthy of all these things? Yep. So you you have to you have to put in the work. Yep. And I think sometimes, I think even some Christians, I think, can have this idea that all of this is just about like, vanity or wanting to hoard material wealth yep, or yep. this or this because you know the the, the bible can be it, it, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing when it talks about money mm -hmm. right yeah sometimes it can be like like i've i've had people you know get get mad at me for giving not, not even giving financial advice mm -hmm. but for like encouraging people to get their money yeah. in order and whatever and you yeah. know the, oh you know azubi is a christian you shouldn't be you shouldn't be you know talking about <clears throat> talking about these things you shouldn't be valuing money yeah. if i talk about bitcoin it's like i'm like guys i don't want like i don't want you to be broke just yeah. like i don't want you to be fat yeah like the, it's not 
I don't know. Like the, no, the, th- pe- th- people connect the. But, but what it's, you're getting at a, is, yeah. is it's not confusing. It's paradoxical. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of paradoxes in the Bible. Mm. Jesus was fully God, but fully man. That's yeah, a paradox. Yeah, yeah. How do we understand that? We're saved by grace through faith alone, but mm-hmm. we're called to perform good works. Mm-hmm. We're called to be different. Be a living sacrifice. Be a living sacrifice. <laughs> So yeah. there's these paradoxes that that we go through. Like we know that there's going to be hostility from the world, yet we're called to live life of examples yeah. and to love people that 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 persecute us, right? So these these paradoxes that are are hard. And so money is the same exact way. Mm. Yes, don't let the pursuit and the love of money consume your yes. life. However, be a good steward with your time, talent, and treasure. Yeah. He who works his land will have abundant food. He who chases fantasies will have their share of, uh, share of poverty. Yeah. Right. That's twice in Proverbs. Mm-hmm. It's so important that it repeated. <laughs> you know. So there's these stories that we see all throughout Scripture. It, I mean, man, there's you talk about social programs and welfare. There's an entire uh, chapter where they're arguing amongst the widows and who's going to take care of the widows. I believe this is in Thessalonians, and and Paul is like, look, man. Um, Everybody should be taking care of your own household. Yeah. And if a widow, if a widow is truly a widow and she's older and she has no one to take care of her, then let the church take care of her. Mm-hmm. But check this out. Some of y'all widows that are still young and want to get married, y'all being busy bodies, just go get remarried. Mm-hmm. Stop, stop being out here gossiping and, and you know, talk about like the scriptures not correcting women, right? That's a whole another conversation. And then he goes, Oh, and by the way, he uh who does not provide for the needs of his family, specifically his immediate family, is worse than a non-believer and is denied mm-hmm. the faith. So Paul is orchestrating this entire system of, first of all, all you guys just need to care for your own family. Yes. If you got a widow in your own family, care for that widow. Yeah. Second of all, if, you, if you're if you single, if you're a widow and you're out here being a busybody and mm-hmm. gossiping and all this stuff, just go get remarried. You're, you're going to burn with passion. Get remarried. And everybody else, the, the widow that's older that doesn't got no family, the church got to figure out a way to take care of her. Yeah. That's where we have benevolence ministries and charity and stuff. So it's like all these things get worked out in the scriptures mm-hmm. And and think about think about if we just did that. Think about if everyone just took care of their parents, and generationally didn't yeah. didn't, didn't expect the government to take care of. Them. Dude, that's one thing I love about the culture I'm from. In terms of being Nigerian, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because some of the things that are kind of promoted and pushed in the West or sometimes in the USA in particular, some of it is actually really foreign to me mm-hmm. and very weird. There's mm-hmm. there's multiple things. And one of them is like this whole kicking your kid out the house at 18. That's weird, man. It's so weird it's to me. Bizarre. I'm like, why? Like, I mean, to be fair, they <laughs> sent you to boarding school at 11. <laughs> <laughs> I was all, always like, get, out. Get, out. Be, get out of there. 18 is too late. Yeah, We're going to exactly. man you up. Yeah. So, <laughs> but like, like that idea, even from a, even from a generational wealth perspective, even from a setting someone up to be able to get married yeah. and have a, you know, buy their own house or whatever. I'm like, that's really backwards. Yes. And then also on the opposite end is, um, you know, the whole just uh, your parents pass a certain age and you just kind of shove them in a nursing home. And when, especially when people don't like go and visit their own parents, mm-hmm. when it, it, like it's, it's, it's all very odd to me. Yep. Um, or even just the fact that like, I'll tell you something I've, I've, I've told this to people before. Cause you know, I grew up in the middle East and, and so on. And, you know, people ask about, you know, this situation there and that situation. And they're like, Oh, what about like homelessness? And I'm in a lot of those countries, like, you know, the homelessness rate is approaching zero mm. and they themselves wouldn't understand if they came to California and went to some of the big cities and they just saw like tens of thousands of people mm-hmm. out there on the street in LA and Skid Row or yeah. whatever, yeah. they wouldn't understand it mm. because they'd be like, where's your family? Mm-hmm. Where are your brothers? Yeah. Where are your, where's your dad? Where yeah. are your mom? Like, how can you, how can you just be out here totally on your own yes. and people are just walking past as if this is normal because their worldviews, it's so much more family-based and yeah. so much more charitable yes. and everything like that. And, you know, people can be critical of the way certain things are in the Middle East or whatever. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm like, that's a massive W for the way that they do things yeah. over there. It's not just like, oh, the government, you know, the government, the state, the yeah, politicians yeah, yeah, yeah. should take care of everyone. It's like, no, like these are these are our brothers. These are our sisters. These yeah. are like, we, you can't just be out there on the street, yes. you know. Yes. living like a dog you yeah. know in fact the dogs are treated better in los angeles mm-hmm. right that's crazy that's crazy it, 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 but it's literally true yeah. it's literally true right yeah um and so i think there are so many things this is a slightly different conversation but i think like there are so many things in the modern west that we do get right mm-hmm. and that are admirable sure. and that so much progress has been made on but then there are other things where we are experiencing a a decline. Mm-hmm. A very obvious one is the whole marriage and family yep. and children situation. Really, yep. birth rates are in the toilet. Yep. People are not even you know replacing themselves. We're getting to a stage where what like half the women over thirty 
are single and childless for the first yeah. time ever. By by, for, tw- by 2030, yeah. half of the working women okay. will be single and yeah, childless. Like, that's, that's, that's crazy. I, I think the UK is already closer to it. Yeah, that's dark. Um, that's dark. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, right? Yeah. Ma- marriage rates are really, really plummeting. Yeah, they're going And down. even the attitude towards it is has changed a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, men are scared of women. Women are scared of men. Mm-hmm. People don't know what a man or a woman is. Like, you know, so we, we, we're simultaneously moving forwards and backwards yeah. in many ways. Um, if the, the uh, people's approach to life, approach to children, approach to seeing the goofy stuff going on in Canada where sure. they're just like deleting people to yep. use your term, right? Even yep. in some funeral homes now, they have like dying rooms where you go into the room and you literally, soon it's going to be like for efficiency, you literally sit in your coffin <sighs> and they just take you out and yeah. people are like, oh, pro- you know, this is progressive. What I'm like, guys, this is dark. Like yeah. it, it's genuinely really dark. Yep. Right. It's such an anti-life, anti-human approach. I'm sure yeah. you're seeing, you know, with the environmentalist movement, you know, the best thing you can do for the future is not, not have, have kids. Uh, all Yuck. of that. St- all, all that stuff. Yuck. I'm just like, yo, guys, this like. Is a sickness. <laughs> the highest order. Yuck. Yeah. This, this, these are the things that I see. And I'm like, yo, like this is. But 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 but, 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 to, but, to, but to bring it back, mm. like. If. We could sit and we can talk about this stuff all yeah. day. Right. But I think sometimes if we're both being sober and critical about conservatives is that we're, they're trying to go backwards Yes. instead of saying, Hey, everything we just talked about with family, everything we just talked about with health, everything we just talked about with fitness, everything we just talked about with taking care of our, our own, uh, fam, right. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I think those are the values that need to be Absolutely. communicated. I think those are the things that need to be said. 100%. And I think when we start casting vision, mm-hmm. that's when the next generation will grab a hold of it and go, okay, cool. I've been sold this bill of goods that like the environment is God uh, animals are sacred, uh, babies are not, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm and I'm not supposed to reproduce. I'm not supposed to re, you know I'm not supposed to continue on our species. Yeah. I'm just I'm I'm just a highly evolved animal that can just have fun in terms of sexual interaction mm-hmm. and and hookup culture and all these things. But when there's an alternative vision casted, yes, I think that's when people can latch onto it. And unfortunately, I if I'm honest, and I think you would you would agree, I think conservatives have done a bad job of casting that vision. I I 100% agree yep. with that. And so my question to you would be how do we get more people to go let's just let's just for the sake of argument mm. let's just say inflation's bad the system's rigged just say all oh, that's true. Yeah. How do we get the bottom 80% to become the top 20%? Ba- based wow. on that preposition presupposition mm-hmm. which I actually don't even agree with. Yeah. But based on that presupposition, how do we get the bottom 80% to become the top 20%? The yeah. bottom 80% in fitness can become the top 20% in yes. fitness. Same thing financially, same yeah. thing relationally, same thing career-wise. What are some practical steps you would give? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there are, I think it needs to be approached on two levels. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying this is super easy. I think the individual level is easier, mm-hmm. right? If there's a young man or a young woman out there, it's easy. It's easier to prescribe. Like I can give someone a, you know, this is how you get your diet. I've written books on it, right? Yep, this, yep. this is how you get your diet in order. Mm-hmm. This is how you, how you train. Yes. This is how you, you know, lose weight, gain muscle, yes. whatever it is. These are things you can do financially yes. how to build simple things. How to build, yeah like yeah. You, you, yeah. you can individually give people great advice mm-hmm. and there are many podcasters and youtube channels and authors and people out there coaches consultants who, who are helping people along on all these things i think and this is where i'm going to sound like a little bit more of a lefty mm-hmm. but you do also need something at a at a system level okay right you need to analyze okay i'll tell i'll tell you what you need to do you need to listen to all these things that the the red pill people are complaining about, mm-hmm. right? All the because lots of them would say things like, "You know what? I'm pro marriage. No, like, like I, I'm in favor of marriage and family as a concept. Mm-hmm. I think the nuclear family is great. Yep, but I don't think it's worth it for men to get to get married under the current laws. It's mm-hmm. too risky. Yeah, the divorce rate is too high. The yeah. way, like so, go so, get a vasectomy in your twenties. <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> don't do that, guys. Please. Um, but like the um. So I think there are there are I had I had to do the roller drop. Yeah, go ahead. There are there are system level things that a lot of conservatives are just not addressing. Okay. Okay. No fault divorce. Okay. I don't even know the perfect solution, right? From my perspective, I'm I'm I I know personally, I'm very against no fault divorce. Absolutely. Right. There's people who would call me a dinosaur for this, or say that I'm backwards, or this or that. I think no fault divorce has been a catastrophe. If you create a system where 
there's you're you're making a contract, right? You are making a contract with the state if you're getting married yes. legally under the way it currently yes. is. Yes. For the tax and then, benefits. Yes. yes. If if that exists and you're okay, cool. Like this person's like, cool, I want this for life. And then mm-hmm. it's like, look, for any reason whatsoever, you can just, you know, um, you're not happy, whatever. You can just kind of go and break this contract and then in some cases be rewarded for doing so. Mm-hmm. You can't then be mad at men who see this and observe it and have perhaps seen people go through it for them to be concerned or even outright frightened or yeah. put off this entire thing. Mm-hmm. So instead of just telling them to man up or mm-hmm. to just do it anyway or to just pick pick the right person, yeah. you you do have to address that system. Yeah. Right yeah. there, you 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 do have to address these things. I, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Yeah, I and I don't know exactly why. Maybe because it sounds very unromantic, or it sounds kind of removed from the religious marriage. Sure. But the truth is that a lot of people are not getting married in a truly religious sense these days. Mm-hmm. So if overall, as a society, for all people, not just for religious people or just for Christians, you do want to boost the marriage rates and you do want more people Absolutely. to form families and all yeah. over, then you do have to address. Some of these things, because right now there's sort of one foot in this tradition. Like with things like alimony laws and the way that um, you know, custody is handled and this and this, mm-hmm. it, it's got a, a foot in the old world, yeah, where women were not working, yeah, that's true, and it was very, you know, so- it was it was a, it was an overcorrection, yeah, to the very things that needed to be corrected at yeah. that time initially, yeah. exactly. So now, so now, now it's overcorrecting the now, other yeah, way. Yeah, now there's still that foot in the world, but yeah. you've changed all these other things. Yes. So you know, you've kind of got you got feminism and you've got yeah. equality and this yeah. and this and this, but you haven't gone and updated. Yeah. some of these other things and it creates this weird situation where if if you and your wife are both more traditional minded yeah. right you can still do it and have it work yep. but for the people for for kind of everybody else these guys are like well why would i get married like what's the what's well, the incentive I would say, here i wouldn't you know? i say don't get married i say give your life to jesus yeah <laughs> i say give your life to jesus sure. or or check this out mm-hmm. even if you're not convinced that jesus bodily rose from the grave how about you just live your life like jesus prescribes mm-hmm. Just, just do that for Dude, a year. Uh, Go to church every Sunday. Lift your hands during worship. Do read Proverbs. Read chapter of the Bible. Year. Do that for a year. Do you know what I think? You know what I mean. And just, just test it out. Yeah. But, but, but to, 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 just, just okay. to add to something you said. Sure. You, have you, are you familiar with who Frank Turk is? He's one of the I'm leading not, no. apologists. You would love Frank okay. Turk. He's not conservative, red pill, mm-hmm. none of that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. He speaks out about some of the lunacy that's going on. Frank Turk said a statement, and he said, "No fault divorce." Has done more to damage our our family structure yes. than the LGBT community ever. Oh, by has. far, by far, not even comparable. So there's definitely by Christians that far. have said, "Yo, mm. when no fault divorce passed, mm-hmm. it was crazy in terms mm. of what it did to the family structure." Yeah. And then we can get conspiratorial in terms of like the welfare system and is it rewarding mm-hmm. dysfunctional behavior? Yada yada yada. I do think having seen people that have gone through divorces, unfortunately, and has been, I know. Three couples mm-hmm. out of the the hundreds that I know mm-hmm. that have gone through a divorce. Very small percentage. Um, you only know three. I only know three. And like, not just in your community, but everywhere. And, and my people, I personally know, okay, have been friends gotcha, with. Gotcha. Right. So, okay. so I go to a church. The church at the, at, the, at its peak was about a thousand people. Okay, I got it. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, uh, to eighty percent of those were married couples or whatever. And so, out of those, out of the hundreds and hundreds of couples I know, okay. I know three that have gotten. So I'm just I I I I don't like doing the exaggeration sure, and sure. minimizing or exaggerating yeah, yeah. numbers. So I'm really trying to give you an honest. Yeah. Take two of them were really close friends of mine. Three of them wasn't in this. Uh, third one's in this area, and f- a fourth one recently got divorced and remarried. So I know, yeah, four. I know four in the past year. Yeah, you know four yeah. in the past year. Yeah, I know four total people I personally know. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about four yeah. total. Yeah, four total that I, that I could think of. And, that, n- and none and none of these are people who are like, um, these are all like solid dudes these are not people who like you know went out and were yeah. cheating cheating while like, so, no no no, no <laughs> and these that. weren't necessarily situations like yeah, that yeah, either yeah. there are two of them where actually if i'm honest with you all three of them the dudes cheated okay interesting. and then one of them the woman cheated okay and then one woman cheated um so, and, and in those yeah. situations i say all that to say that if we if we and, and and i don't know if you saw destiny's conversation on fresh and fit but he pointed this out okay. if you look at what divorce does um first of all it's damaging to both men and women yes but this notion that like women get a free ride mm-hmm. and there's and it's without consequence, that's I don't, not I don't, true. I don't no, that's think that's correct. true either, no. right? Uh, they men recover and improve financially after a divorce. Women mm-hmm. don't; their income decreases, mm-hmm. um, just from a practicality of having to care for a kid, mm-hmm. right? And so, in all these situations, um, the women didn't fare out better. 
The women didn't yeah, fare and, out and, better. In, in many, they don't. Yeah, they don't. They, they, there was no alimony. Mm -hmm. There was no child support. One mm -hmm. of them, um, and I talked to the lead attorney about this, and he, he like wouldn't believe me. But uh, one of them, uh, no, no, I'm trying to think. Two of them, the the men got full custody of the kids and became the the father, like yeah. like became the the 100 provider. And it's sad to one of them where like the mom doesn't even see the kids anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it's terrible for the children in general. It's terrible for the children, it's but, for it's, the children. but it's bad, it's bad for both men yeah. and women. And so I go, man, if we're, if we're helping men, let's give them the tools and the resources and the, and the information as well as the inspiration mm -hmm. so that we can decrease the odds so much yeah. that that's not even a possibility that, that it literally becomes a one or 2% chance. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, I think going into marriage, also a mentality of like, that is that is a word that is a word yes. we don't even use. Yeah. The D word. We don't Dude, even use that. I, word. I'm, in our, I'm in, like at our in our home, we don't even say that good. word. Dude, I'm I'm exactly with you on this. Yeah. But what I have learned is that my view on marriage and divorce isn't, isn't everybody's. Not even just not every like it's it's a minority view. Sure. That's fair. Right? Even believing that divorce like sorry, <laughs> gosh. Even believing that marriage is truly, truly, truly for life. Mm -hmm. That used to be the norm. This is, again, what I talk about, like, you know, how the norm has shifted, how the average has shifted, mm -hmm. right? If you went back, let's say, 100 years ago, mm -hmm. everybody believed that marriage, of course, marriage is for life, sure. right? Barring extreme circumstances, right? Marriage is for life. You're committing to that person for yep. life. You're yes. going to raise your kids. You're going to live together. You're going to die together. Yep. Richer, poorer, yep. sickness, health. Listen to the vows, yep. right? Whereas so many people now, like the norm now is, okay, well, you know, divorce is bad, but... If it's not working or someone's not happy or you're just like like pretty minor stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's just there. And and it's just because it's just become so normalized. Even yeah. people who even many of like the the leaders and celebrities and what like people are on their third, fourth, fifth marriage, like it's yeah, that's yeah. the example that people are seeing. Yeah. You know, that's kind of just become normalized. There's the stigma has been removed. Yes. Sometimes stick. Here's co something controversial. Sometimes shame and stigma is good. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know that's not popular, but like there are some things that are shameful. There are some things that should be stigmatized. There yes. are some things that should be taboo. Yes. Um, and all of these things have just been eroded over the years where we're literally just living in a society where it's especially for so many young people, it's literally just, you know, do, do, do whatever, yeah, do, you. do whatever do you. you want, yes, yes, right? Yes, it yes. doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can sleep with all the people you want. You can uh, even simultaneously, as long as it's, you know, consensual and you're not deceiving anyone, you can have your only fans. You can do this. You can do that. that you nice. can just leave. And anyone who even judges you is the bad guy. This you is know? a and sickness. <laughs> <laughs> the highest order. Yeah, man. Yeah, so 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 that that's I think, where I we think are. The, the hard I, part for me in all yeah. of this, man, is like I hear you. Yeah. And I just go, I can't expect spiritually dead blind people. people and spiritually dead people yeah. to act like they have any sense. Yeah. And I would agree, like a lot of this stuff is hard. It is. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't have a framework that that that, that helps you with that. And so I, I I agree, and that's why I'm like, man, it got it has to go back mm. to a, a a worldview shift. Do you, you know? do you know the thing as well is because in the absence of that, right? Religious marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to expand this beyond just Christian because I believe that you know Jewish and Muslim people have the same idea, right? Is that it's not just it's not just a a, a contract and an agreement in the way you know we're doing a business sure, venture, sure, and it's so, like that. So no, much more than that. Yes, it's like you are taking a vow before God, yep. before your families. Yep. It literally says that you, to, it's two becoming one. You are becoming one yes. flesh. Yep. Right. If you remove all of that, then it does just become a contract between two people mm -hmm. and the state. Where and un, and again under that mindset, it's like, yeah, well, if you're not happy with that, like, why should you stay? Yeah, I just dissolve so, this business arrangement. Yeah, so that that's the mentality that an increasing number of people have, and sadly, there are even people who call themselves quote unquote Christian or quote unquote religious, mm -hmm. who also have the view of, hey, girl, you're not happy, like, leave. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, no infidelity, no in, no abuse, no whatever. You know, just I'm not happy. We grew apart. That kind of thing. Just very vague, fuzzy. Things. Yeah. If I think of actually most divorces that I'm personally aware of, mm -hmm. as far as I know, there was not there was not any infidelity, there was not any abuse, there was not any, it was just we grew apart mm -hmm. or X person wasn't happy. Yeah. You hear that all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, uh, we had somebody. And, we had somebody in my church. Somebody yeah. said, "Show me where people are holding people accountable." Um, mm. 
a, a good friend of mine basically pulled that. Oh, okay. And uh, it's actually a pretty sad story. He, uh, I'm, try, I'm trying not to give away too sure, many details. Sure. He married a girl in another country. He was on his passport bros vibes. I hear that. Brought her back here. Mm -hmm. Not like a, not like a, out of yeah, the yeah, continent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not out of the continent. Brought her back here. She became extremely acclimated to our community. She was amazing. Uh, I'm still friends with her till this day. Yeah. And um, they got, they started, uh, a lot of our church went through the Dave Ramsey debt free plan, which is a, actually a great thing people can do for their marriage is get out of debt. Yeah. And she, the way their debt snowball works is like you start with your smallest debts to your bigger debts to get momentum. Is got to the point where she paid off all of his debt. Oh wow! And then I get a call on my birthday, and it's her. He's supposed to take me out to the movies tomorrow. But it's like one of my close friends, and basically goes, you know, hey, so and so, this person's telling me he he wants to divorce me, and we're done. No way. Just just out of the blue. And so like on my birthday, I'm like, all right, I guess we're not going to the movie. And I'm sitting down with him, and I'm just like trying to like, what do you, what is wrong with you, like? Did she cheat? Like, what happened? And he's just like, no, nah, like, I just don't want to do it anymore. And I'm like, bro, you, that's not how this works. Yeah. You don't just get to say, I'm not happy anymore. Yeah, you don't just get not... to say, I'm out. And, and so, and ch check, check out what happened. So he wanted to keep going to our church. Mm. Nobody. He got sat down and got wow. excommunicated. He got kicked out of the church. Wow. You can't do that. You can't do that here. You can't do that. Like, it, it, and this happened with another buddy of mine. And till this day, Zuby, I don't talk to these dudes. Yeah. Like that's to me, there's there's levels of cowardly. Mm. That's one of the most cowardly things to do is just to bounce on your marriage with no grounds for divorce and be yeah. like, I'm just not happy. I'm just I'm just gonna get out of here. Yeah. yeah, we can't be friends no more, bro. That's some real low level, like cornball. It's whack. <laughs> it's just trash. <laughs> and and I say that yeah. to say, like, but our church was like, yeah, no, yeah. you yeah. need to find somewhere else to fellowship. That is not yeah, that's not that's okay. Not how here. We roll. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I th and I think there's an interesting question here, right? This is where it does get political, mm -hmm. right? It's like, should there be a legal change there, right? Should, should you legally be like, you've, you've made this lifelong vow contract, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. should you mm -hmm. legally with no, again, it's no fault, mm -hmm. just be able to break the contract at any time and just leave. you got kids, you got whatever, yeah. Yeah. you know, I think that that's a, that's a big question. Yeah. That's a big question, you know, with liberalism and progressivism and whatever people say, yes, of course, yeah. because it's freedom. But then from a more conservative standpoint, it's like, well, no, yeah. like, no, there, there should have to be something right to, to prevent that. And I don't, again, I don't, I don't know my, my look, my, my ideal, my, I, I don't do utopian thinking. My, my ideal would be I'm pretty libertarian politically. Sure. My ideal would be you have a situation where the state and the government is very light touch and not involved in so many things. Mm -hmm. But what you do have is you have very strong families and communities yes. and overall moral values and social fabric. So you do not even need, you don't need laws for absolutely everything that are coming from the state because mm -hmm. people are just operating in a, in communities mm -hmm. and in an overall environment mm -hmm. where you know, even with other things, right? You don't need an explicit law telling people that, you know, you're not allowed to twerk in front of children, right? You, you shouldn't need a law. You shouldn't need a law to say like, hey, don't don't put children on hormones and start sure, removing. Sure, like, sure, 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 sure. You, you shouldn't, and you didn't need, before Before you didn't need a law for that, yep. right? It, it just like people knew not to do that. Yep. And now they're like, okay, if, like all these states are like, we need to craft legislation for this yes, and this. Yes. And I'm like, you shouldn't have to shouldn't do have to. that. Hey, like, by the way, in the same way that if a, if my 17-year-old uh, nephew goes to the doctor and says, I just feel like I'm not big enough, can you give me TRT? Oh, yeah. You go, no, bud. Yeah. No. A, a, girl, a girl who's 16 <laughs> says, I'm not developing fast enough. Mm -hmm. Can you give me estrogen? Mm -hmm. No. An anorexic girl wants a gastric bypass. You right. know, no. I, I feel like I'm too fat. Like, yes. No. No, no yeah. we won't do totally, it. You're totally right. Yeah. Um, so this is where, you know, the sort of freedom and liberty concept becomes, you know, it, it can become a little bit hazy and it yep. can come back to bite people. I think freedom and I, I'm such an advocate for freedom and liberty. Yeah. However, it needs responsibility and morality as yeah. well. If all you have is freedom and liberty yeah. and that's the ultimate value with nothing else yep. in a society, yep. then it just leads to nihilism. It le leads to hedonism. It leads to, yes. you know, just all sorts of mischief and nonsense. Yes. Yes. Right. My buddy, John Clash just said, we have so much freedom that we became slaves to sin. <sighs> Bars. That's you literally know? it. That's, yeah. that's where we're at. Yeah, that's it. You know, and it, and it's interesting. I think Jordan Peterson has, has, has used this analogy before, right? It's like, if someone just gives you a ball, if, you know, there's a group, there's, you're with a group of 
friends, right? Mm -hmm. And you're in a field. Someone just gives you a ball and he's like, okay, play the game. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait, what? Someone just gives you gives you a chess board. Mm -hmm. You've never played chess before, whatever. Right, yeah. Play. Right. You're like, right. wait, what are the move? What am I allowed to do? Right. You you need some boundaries. Right. You need some rules. You need some stricture to even have freedom. Yes. Right. You'll just stand there with the ball and be like, Yes. All right. I don't know what to. Are we playing basketball? Play, are we yeah. playing soccer? Yeah. yeah. Are we playing like? Am I kicking the ball? Yeah. Am I throwing the ball? <laughs> can I, can I am tackle? I, what can am I, I doing? Can, yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't know what to do. So yep. it's like you actually need rules and guidelines. Come on to even have the freedom. Yep. Now you yep. can move. You can do any chess move that's legal, Yes. but it has to be an allowable chess yes. move. You can't just be like, hey, I'm just going to jump over here and knock your pieces off the board and I win. Yep. It's like, nope, you got to play. Yep, yep. And and again, driving it back home to faith, like that's, that's where I think like the scriptures are, 100%. you know what I mean? Like it, it, it creates those guardrails for people. I got a couple more questions for Zuby, but I'm also thinking about going into some Q&A. Maybe we'll do, we'll do Q&A for Super Chats and then we're going to start winding down Hey, if you want to see the extended version of this podcast, completely unedited, consider partnering with us in our online community for as little as $5 a month. In exchange, you get access to these podcasts as we stream them live before anyone else gets to see them. You get access to the replay of our daily after party streams, access to our private discord server, access to discount codes, and so much more. So help us continue conceptualizing the gospel through media, podcasting, and YouTube, and partner with us for as little as $5 a month. Also, be sure to follow us on the Spotify podcast app, on Facebook, and on Instagram. We're constantly posting content there that I think you'll find extremely valuable. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.